Watching live pictures of the Obafemi Awolowo Prize for Leadership Award ceremony taking place right here in Lagos. As regards what to expect from this prestigious ceremony, Akiwumi Adeshino, president of the African Development Bank, will be presented the 2023 award of the Obafemi Awolowo Prize for Leadership today. Now, it said that Adeshino was picked as the winner of the prize after a rigorous selection process by a panel of eminent Nigerians. According to the organizers, the actual presentation of this prize, which consists of a plaque, medal, and the certificate of award, will be made at the ceremony that's expected to draw, of course, a wide array of distinguished Nigerians and global exemplars, which we've also seen includes the likes of the Obi of Onicha, to mention a few. President Bola Tinubu, his counterpart in the United Republic of Tanzania, Samia Suluhu Hassan, former head of state and chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Obafemi Awolowo Foundation, that's General Yakubu Gowona, among the eminent personalities also expected to grace the um, ceremony. Namaka Achebe Igwe. His Royal Highness the Olu of Wari Ogiame Atuashi III. Thank you very much, Your Royal Highness. And the Akarigu of Rema, His Royal Highness Babatunde Adewale Ajayi. Your Excellencies, thank you very much. While the proceedings were going on, uh, we also received a few other dignitaries. The governor of Kaduna State, Governor Ubasani, is given a warm welcome. The deputy governor of Anambra State, Dr. Onyekachi Ibizim, is acknowledged his presence with a warm round of applause. And representing the governor of Akwa Ibom State, Mrs. Imo Abasi Jacob. And last but certainly not the least, representing the president of Togo, His Excellency Fari Nasigbe, we do have with us, we're honored to have with us, the Prime Minister of Togo, Mrs. Victoria Dogbe. Thank you very much for joining us. For those who knew Chief Obafemi Awolowo, he was really a quintessential Renaissance man, complex, creative, compassionate, and among many other things, he was a thought leader extraordinaire, a brilliant lawyer, a profound writer and scholar, a wise sage and philosopher, an innovative futurist, futurist a diplomat, and leading member of Nigeria's independence movement a visionary political strategist, and an icon of development in the then Western Nigeria. He was a man of faith and integrity, and in terms of his passion for the upliftment of his people, a leader who was way ahead of his time. That, in a nutshell, describes the late chief of Bafemi Awolowo, whose life we also commemorate today. Kindly turn your attention, ladies and gentlemen, to the screen for a short video presentation on the lifetimes and achievements of Chief Obafemi Awolowo. Maxwell Anderson once said that there are some men who lift the age they inhabit till all men walk on higher ground in that lifetime. Chief Obafemi Awunowo was without a doubt one of such men. Clearly, 
one of the most outstanding figures in Nigerian history, but his contemporaries in the anti-colonial movement, Chief Awolowo, led a strong push for independence for Nigeria, which was achieved on October 1, 1960. Independence for Nigeria in 1960 is imperative. But independence for Nigeria as a corporate entity is not enough. The peoples of Nigeria must at the same time be guaranteed their freedom. Yeah. Awo was a strong believer in democracy and federalism. It was his firm belief throughout his engagement with the Nigerian nation that only federalism could safeguard the interests of each ethnic nationality, region and state and create a sustainable basis for Nigerian unity. Chief Awonowo introduced issues-based politics in Nigeria when his party, the Action Group, was launched in 1951. The party promised four freedoms in its manifesto, three of which were freedom from ignorance, freedom from disease, and freedom from want. In other words, he articulated a development agenda that put people firmly at the center of the process. Remarkably, this was several decades ago, before the World Bank prescribed the human development paradigm for developing nations. In 1951, the AG won the first elections held in the Western region. Chief Awolowo then served as leader of government business and minister for local government. He became premier of Western region in 1954 and was in that office till 1959. Together with his team, which he described as well-knit, highly disciplined, and fanatically loyal, he was able to record remarkable successes in government. <laughs> On January 17, 1955, the Epochal Free Primary Education Scheme was launched in the western region of Nigeria. Children of all tribes in Nigeria, Hausas, Igbos, and Yorubas, whose parents have the required residential qualifications in the region, also benefit. Under his leadership, primary school population more than doubled between 1953 and 1959. The number of secondary schools rose from 46 in 1953 to 139 in 1959, with a phenomenal increase in pupil numbers. When the Minister of Education went to UMC practicing school, Okeadu, he met two small pupils, one of them none other than Tokumbo Obolowo, the Premier's daughter. Her sister, Ayodele, is also being educated here. The labor policy of his government was the most enlightened in the whole federation. He introduced a five shillings and six pence minimum wage in 1954. The question of wages, for instance, we are the only region in the country paying five shillings and six pence minimum wage to workers. As opposed to two shillings and eight pence in other regions, his other achievements included rapid industrialization, provision of infrastructure and democratization of local government within the year of his assumption of office. Chief Awolowo implemented many other progressive policies. His administration introduced free health care for children and aggressive rural and agricultural development, which drove its resolve to free the people from poverty and want. The first television station in Africa was established in the Western region by Chief Awolowo's administration in 1959. He also established the Western Nigeria Broadcasting Service. A few events in my life have given me so much pleasure as to come before tonight to the first television network in Africa. Western Nigeria television is already being emulated by other parts of this country as well as the number of other African states. To further illustrate his trailblazing leadership, 
A little less than 50 years before the United Nations Millennium Development Goals came into being, AWU had already made universal education, maternal and child health, poverty reduction, employment opportunities, agricultural reforms, as well as environmentally correct policies, including forest reserves and reforestation, priorities of his government. Today's Odua Investment Company Limited, with its many thriving businesses and properties, is a lasting legacy of his progressive government, among other achievements which marked him out as an exceptional modernizer in government. In the Second Republic, the UPN, founded and led by him, implemented its four cardinal programs, which included free education and free health services to the satisfaction of the people of the five states, Oyo, Ondo, Ogo, Lagos, and Bendel, where it was in government. Chief Aulowa was the Federal Commissioner for Finance, a Vice Chairman of the Federal Executive Council in the military government of General Yakubu Gawan. It is on record that he managed the economy so well during those challenging years that the economy recorded an unprecedented percentage of growth. Aulowa was indeed a transformational leader in life and has not surprisingly become an extraordinary phenomenon in death. Awonowo was married to Yeyo Udua, Chief Mrs. H.I.D. Awonowo. The growing appropriation of Baba Awonowo outside the circle of his close political disciples suggests that there is an unmistakable emerging consensus that his legacy contains the best prescriptions for a society such as ours. His ideals and accomplishments continue to influence the politics and policies of the country. 37 years after his transition on May 9, 1987, Chief Awonowo has continued to be the main issue in Nigerian politics and the benchmark for governance in the country. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as you may very well have noticed this morning, I am wearing my Chief Obafemi Awolowo hat in his honor, and I feel so proud, proud to be able to do that in honor of his legacy. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, excellencies, royal fathers, it is often said that we die twice. The first death is when someone on earth utters our name for the very last time. And the first time, rather, the first time is when we give up this body. And the second is when someone on earth utters our name for the very last time. In between is what we call legacy. It is my heartfelt prayer that as an example of selfless and visionary leadership in our country, that the name of Bafemi Awolowo will ring for many, many more years to come as well as the very rich legacy that he left behind for us. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podium an equally distinguished Nigerian statement, statesman with a global footprint, the former Commonwealth Secretary General and the Chairman of the Obafemi Awolo Prize for Leadership Selection Committee, Chief Emeka Anyoku, GCON. Please give him a warm welcome as it comes to the podium. Thank you very much, sir.
Your Excellencies, our Royal Fathers, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to start by joining the director of uh, the Obafemiya Wolowu Foundation, Ambassador Olatokumbo Awolowu Dosimu, in welcoming you all to this award ceremony of the Obafemiya Wolowu Prize for Leadership. I should perhaps, as chairman, of the selection committee for the award speak briefly about how the committee reaches its decisions on the recipient of the award. The premise for our deliberation derives from the prescription contained in the committee's founding literature, which is that the award is intended to recognize a leader in public service who has demonstrated most, if not all, the attributes for which the sage, Chief Obafemi Awolowo, was known in his public service to the people, first in the then Western region and also to the people of Nigeria as a whole. We in the committee also acknowledge Chief Awolowo's pan-African conviction and advocacy. Let me, therefore, sum up some of the key attributes demonstrated by Chief Obafemi Awolowo in his distinguished political career. First, he showed that leadership must be based on the possession of a personal philosophy which the leader would persuade his or her colleagues to adopt and implement. Chief Awolowo's writings in his several books and many pronouncements were clearly the basis of his remarkable performance as the premier of the then Western region. Second, Chief Awolowo showed, a showed that a leader should actively care for the welfare and security of the people that he or she is privileged to lead. An example of this was his introduction of free primary education and agricultural reforms that laudably impacted the lives of the young people and the cocoa farmers in Western region. Third, Chief Awolowo demonstrated that a leader must possess undoubted integrity and a sense of accountability to his or her people. And fourthly, Chief of Bafemi Awolowo believed that a leader must show example of self-discipline and personal organizational capacity in the management of public affairs. And fifthly, Chief Awolowo demonstrated that a leader in a country must be a true patriot and nationalist whose commitment to promoting the interests of all parts of the country must be beyond question. In a pluralistic country such as Nigeria, 
with long established different ethnic groups, Chief Obafemi Awolowo showed us how to become a true patriot. He was conscious of his roots as a Yoruba man, but he demonstrated his unquestionable patriotism and nationalism as leader of the opposition in Nigeria's post-independence parliament and in his countrywide electoral campaign for the presidency of the country. He recognized the challenge of careful management of diversity in our pluralistic country and as such articulated his belief that a true federalism is an essential condition for the peace and progress of Nigeria. Sixthly, Chief Obafemi Awolowo's attribute as a Pan-Africanist is well illustrated in his writings and his interactions with other African leaders. Today is the fourth time that the Obafemi Awolowo Leadership Prize is being awarded. The first awardee was our Nobel laureate, Professor Wole Shoinka. The second awardee was the former president of the Republic of South Africa, Mr. Thabo Mbeki. And the third awardee was the well-known promoter of quality tertiary education in Nigeria and the successful agricultural farmers in Ekiti State, Are Afe Babalola. The fourth awardee at today's ceremony is the renowned Dr. Akiume Adeshina, <laughs> president of the African Development Bank. You will hear more about him, about his tremendous achievements as Federal Minister of Agriculture in Nigeria, and about his even more spectacular performance as President of the African Development Bank. You will hear this, you will hear this later, in this ceremony from Mr. John Momo, Chairman CEO of the Channel's Television. Suffice it for me to say that out of the many reputable nominations received, members of the selection committee unanimously considered Dr. Kiyomi Adeshina as having in his career to date, in a large measure, the chief of Bafemi Awolowo's attributes that I have sought to describe. I thank you all. Please let's give Chief Emeka Yoku an even warmer round of applause. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for your kind and gracious introductory speech, as well as providing for us today the context for the selection of the Abafemi Awolowo Leadership Prize and Leadership Laureate Award. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please turn your attention to the screen for a video presentation on the Abafemi Awolowo Foundation. Yes, that 
lie ahead, those of us who have the good fortune to lead our people, we need statesmanship of a high order and God's guidance in managing the affairs of our country for the benefit of every Nigerian citizen. One important development after the transition of Chief Obafemi Awunowo was the establishment in 1992 of the Obafemi Awunowo Foundation, the custodian of Awu's intellectual legacy. The foundation was set up as an independent, non-partisan, non-profit research institute dedicated to immortalizing the ideals of Chief Awunowo and is committed to the promotion of a socially edifying interaction between policy and scholarship. It has, over the years, established its credentials as a credible advocate on many issues, including education, health, the economy, and poverty alleviation. The foundation has actualized its mission mandate through various outreach programs. These include lectures, dialogues, executive leadership seminars, symposia, and more recently, our conversations. All of these are designed to provide suitable fora for rational discussion of great issues of the day in order to continue to build the idea that inspired the public and patriotic activities of Chief Awunowo. In pursuance of its axiom of generating ideas for national development, the Obafemi Awunowo Foundation has ensured that its annual lecture series hold without fail, even in the face of great challenges like COVID-19. The maiden dialogue was with the theme, Nigeria, the way forward. The foundation also organized other ground lectures and conversational issues like the dialogue on education themed Nigeria and education. The challenges ahead, Nigeria in search of leadership, Nigeria, democracy and the rule of law, and more recently, the Obafemi Awunowo lecture themed with a Nigeria. Subsequently, on March 6, 2022, the foundation held the 30th anniversary symposium to which participants were invited from across the globe. In January 2009, the Obafemi Awunowo Foundation launched a year-long program in celebration of the centenary of the birth of Chief Obafemi Awunowo. Presentation of the foundation's commemorative publication, Awu on the Trail of a Titan. Two centenary lectures were delivered, the first by Professor Wale Joinka and the second, a few weeks later, by a former Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Kofi Annan. A special centenary dialogue was held in collaboration with the Obafemi Awunowo University, Ileife, with the theme, The Awu Legacy and the Youth. It was held at the university's Odudua Hall and was very well attended by the staff and students of tertiary institutions from across the country, despite an ongoing nationwide ASU strike. Indeed, ASU at the national level gave its total support to the program. As part of the celebration, the foundation held a program on 50 years of television in Africa, the journey so far at the Premier Hotel in Ibadan. On October 6, 2009, the foundation launched a book titled Obafemi Awunowo and the Making of Remo, the local politics of a Nigerian nationalist in collaboration with the International African Institute and Edinburgh University Press of the School of Oriental and African Studies, London. From January 21, 2010, the grand finale conference themed Free Education in Nigeria, 55 years on, was held alongside the public presentation of Awo the Builder, the children's version of Awo's biography written by Chief Wumi Adegbomire at Neka House, Alausa, Lagos. 
The foundation has continued to enjoy tremendous support from all strata of the Nigerian society. A significant aspect of the foundation's mandate is poverty alleviation. Very early in its existence, it embarked on a microcredit project mobilizing critical stakeholders to confront the issue of poverty and proper solutions. In furtherance of this objective, the foundation prepared a valuable document which it distributed at a microcredit summit held in Washington, D.C. in the United States in February 1997. And since then, it has continued to build on that pioneer effort. Of particular interest is the annual Obafemi Awolowo Memorial and HID Awolowo Memorial Football Tournament for under-17 boys and girls, designed specifically for the right development of youths at the grassroots. There is also the Foundation Center for Leadership Studies, which hosted its inaugural event titled Leadership for Corporate Philanthropy. The Obafemi Awolowo Prize for Leadership was instituted by the Foundation in the name of Chief Obafemi Awolowo to encourage, recognize, reward and celebrate excellence in leadership. In selecting candidates, emphasis is laid on characteristics of leadership and good governance that are in tandem with Chief Awolowo's values. The candidates must be honest persons, possess strong moral principles, and must also be persons in whom people believe and repose trust. The prize is awarded every two years based on demonstrable evidence of substantial achievements across the board of the criteria laid out by the selection committee. Because of the stringent conditions attached to winning the award, only four distinguished personalities have been able to win the prize. They are Nobel laureate Professor Wale Shoinka in 2012, another Nobel laureate and former South African President Thabo Mbeki in 2014, and Chief Afe Babalola, Senior Advocate of Nigeria in 2018. The 2023 edition was won by Dr. Akiwumi Adeshina. The Awolowo Foundation's varied public outings are in reports which are widely circulated and can be sourced from the Foundation's website. www.obafemiawolowofoundation.com For the Obafemi Awolowo Foundation, it has been decades of impactful engagement with humanity. The foundation looks ahead with confidence to deepen its traditional activities and also break new ground to the glory of God and the development of humanity. Obafemi Awolowo Foundation, generating ideas for national development. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you may applaud. Well, it is now my very sincere honor and pleasure to welcome a distinguished Nigerian on whose shoulders the weight of leadership of this great nation was thrust at the very young age of 31, an age when many young men and women today are still trying to figure out what they want to do with their life. Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the chair of the Abafemi Awolowo Prize for Leadership Foundation, His Excellency General Yakubu Gowan, GCFR, who is joined today by his ever beautiful wife, Mrs. Victoria Hansatu, the one. Yes, you may continue the music roll as General Gowan makes his way to the podium. Thank you.
Mr. President, Excellency Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu, GCFR, ably represented by His Vice President, His Excellency Shekhi Bakashim. Your Excellencies and all former presidents here present, Your Excellencies, diplomatic corps, my lords, Your Royal Highnesses, eminent and distinguished guests, Dr. Akiwumi Adeshino, and of course, dear wife, Janet Adeshino, ladies and gentlemen, I have great pleasure in welcoming you all to the award ceremony of the Obafemi Awolowo Prize for Leadership 2023. The prize was instituted in 2012 in honor of the late sage and one of Nigeria's founding fathers, Chief Obafemi Awolowo, son, GCFR, to recognize and reward excellence in leadership. As is generally well acknowledged, as you have heard, Chief Awolowo exemplified exceptional transformational leadership as made evident by the various leadership positions he held in his lifetime. At various times, he was the premier of Western region, Nigeria, and the leader of the opposition in Nigeria's federal parliament. While I was head of state, he served as the federal commissioner for finance and vice chairman of the federal executive council. I say this. Commissioner Finance helped us to make sure that we did not borrow any that to execute the rule. As it is often said, birds of the same feather flock together. So it is no surprise that in the past 12 years, Awardees have been eminent individuals who are proven change makers in their diverse callings across the African continent. In 2012, the Nobel laureate, Professor Wole Shoyunka, my special guest in those days, But a very good friend, I can tell you that, received the prize at the maiden edition of the award ceremony. Next, the former president of the Republic of South Africa, His Excellency, Mr. Thabo Mbeki, You know, and a foremost Nigerian lawyer and educationist, Are Afe Babalola Fan, D-O-N, emerged as the second and third recipient, respectively. 
As you already know, the president of the African Development Bank, FBFDB, Dr. Akiwumi Adeshino, CON, has deservedly won the prize 2023, which is being presented today, March 6, 2024, a day that would have marked uh, Chief Obafemi Awolo's 115th birthday. May his soul in peace, will always remember him. I must say that the Board of Trustees of Abofo of Bafumi Awolowo, which I chair, is most pleased that people of outstanding leadership always been selected as a respect of the Awolo a prize you know, for leadership. This selection of winners is always preceded by due diligence and strict scrutiny undertaken by the technical committee of the Obafemi Awolo Foundation. I especially I want to thank members of the selection committee, which consists of eminent Nigerians, headed by Chief Emeka Anyok Moshe, my chief. That's my you know, French pronunciation. I thank him for consistently making a tough assignment look very easy. Following this tradition, the choice of Dr. Akiwumi Adeshino can only best be described as having been very well done. He represents the best of Nigeria, hardworking, diligent, brilliant, forward-looking, and deeply patriotic. I also should add that he is elegant, no matter in what way he dresses, either with a bow tie or with the Yoruba side cap, or in any dress whatsoever, but just as they look today. And I must say, I also should add, uh, I've added that he's elegant, his academic and professional credentials are truly intimidating. Little wonder he easily stands tall on national and global platforms. His widely acknowledged performance as Nigeria's Minister of Agriculture and two terms President of Bank, AFDB, attests to his being fit, being fit. The president for leadership. Uh, I think you would like to know that he was Minister for Agriculture and uh, uh, Obasanjo, the President Obasanjo, and also President uh, Ebele Jonathan. And we all know 
how well he performed there. Well done. I heartily congratulate him, just as I, re I commend the award selection committee for a job well done. At the risk of preaching to the converted, may I remind both the committee and Dr. Adeshima that the reward for hard work remains more work. This universally accepted dictum has not changed, though conventional wisdom still says that change is still the only permanent thing. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, may I, on behalf of the Board of Trustees of the Obafemi Awolo Foundation, express my warm and sincere appreciation. And again, allow me to of our women folk. Our thanks and appreciation to Mrs. Janet Adeshino for her care and support for her dear husband over the years to achieve what he has achieved. Well done. I thank you all for listening and thank you all for your kind attention. God bless you all. Enjoy the ceremony. Excellency General Yakub Gowan, thank you very much for your very special remarks and for your continued words of wisdom, grace, and peace. It is indeed a remarkable sign of your leadership that more than 50 years later, you continue to lead the efforts to memorialize the extraordinary legacy and values of Chief Obafemi Awolowo. Thank you very much once again, Your Excellency. Our next speaker is a bold, extraordinary and visionary leader. A glass ceiling breaker. An innovative and people-oriented state person. And a woman of many firsts. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to introduce the very first woman president of the United Republic of Tanzania and the chairperson of this event and ceremony. Please welcome Her Excellency, President Samia Suluhu Hassan.
ici. Your Excellency Azali Osmani, President of the Union of Comoros and the outgoing chairperson of the African Union, fellow heads of states and government, Your Excellency former Nigerian President, Your Highnesses, the Royal Fathers, Majesties, Chiefs and Igwes, Ambassador Dr. Olato Kumbo Awolo Odosumo, founding member of the executive and executive director of Obafemi Awolo's foundation, Chief Emeka Nyauku was Secretary General and Prize for Leadership. I also like to recognize our D, Dr. Akinomi Adoeji Ayodeji Adeshina, President of the African Development Bank Group. Excellency Ministers, Excellency Senators, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon to you all. My sisters and brothers of Nigeria, what a fitting way to recognize Africa's optimist in chief and Nigeria's gallant son. I'm delighted. I'm delighted to be able to attend this distinguished event in honor of Dr. Akinumi Adeshina as he received the pre prestigious Awolowo Prize for Leadership today. I wish to congratulate you Ambassador Dr. Tokunbo, for the excellent manner that you have been honoring the memory of your father, the late Chief Obafemi Awolowo. <laughs> Indeed, Chief Obafemi Awolowo's life, legacy and lessons inspires well beyond the shores of Nigeria. It's a great honor, therefore, to be asked to chair this auspicious ceremony for the award of Obafemi Awolo's Prize for Leadership. I would also wish to commend the foresight of the eminent selection members of the Awolo's Prize for Leadership for selecting Dr. Adeshina to receive this award. Just like my fellow heads of state and government and former heads of state, I came here to honor and celebrate Dr. Adesina. I've known and worked closely with Dr. Adesina, and I can say indeed, this award is befitting to adding color to his already prosperous career and eminent personality as one of the Africa's finest visionary leaders, as others as others have described him. He's just like um, Chief Awolo was, was, a great son of Nigeria and a great son of Africa. Moreover, just as Chief Awolo, Adeshina is one among the few visionaries for Nigeria's and Africa's development. Indeed, you could not have chosen a more deserving person. Thank you so much. <laughs> Dr. Adeshina is a dynamic and visionary leader. He has a rare ability to turn vision into concrete transformational solutions that impact the lives of millions of people across Africa. Tanzania is one of many states or African states that has greatly benefited from its dynamic and astute leadership. <laughs> Dr. Deshina is a highly active leader who works effectively globally and across Africa. A distinguishing feature of his leadership 
is the ease with which he works collaboratively with all development stakeholders from heads of state and government, national leaders, private sector leaders, to civil society organizations, regional and international organizations, and non-state actors in developing, promoting, and standing up for the best interest of Africa. That is Dr. Adeshina. With his unrelenting passion, drive, and commitment, has equally been highly effective in transforming the African Development Bank into what it is today, as a global financial institution. Thanks to his extraordinary ability to work with people and for getting things done. Over the past eight years, he has been instrumental in Tanzania's development agenda. Under his able leadership, the FDB has invested massively in energy, transport, agriculture, water and sanitation, and infrastructure for regional connectivity. Through his leadership and support, we have been able to raise $3.8 billion to support the construction of the regional standard gauge railway that will connect Tanzania to Democratic Republic of Congo and the Republic of Burundi. These reforms to African Agenda 2063, which, advo which advocates for economic interconnectedness and people's connectivity to ensure full movement of goods and services in the region. Dr. Adeshina is a people-focused leader with an unusual passion to see the lives of Africans change see Africa feeding itself. I was, I saw this in action when he convened the 2023 Feed Africa Summit together with President Makisal of Senegal and the African Union. The summit which attracted 35 heads of state and government was a very successful summit. Thanks to leadership all African countries are driving towards achieving food security. In Tanzania, the ADB is supporting our transformative Building a Better Tomorrow initiative to realize innovation opportunities for youth in large-scale farming with support provided by way of training, inputs, mechanization, and links, links the youth to off-takers. Dr. Adeshina, is more than the president of the African Development Bank Group. He's a dear brother who puts his heart fully into what he does, facilitating, helping, supporting, advising, and pushing to ensure every African country succeeds. He's really pushing. It is for these and other reasons that Dr. Adeshina is highly respected in Tanzania and across Africa. My presence here today attests to the impactful contribution of the transformative leadership of Dr. Deshina in my own country, Tanzania. Congratulations again, my dear brother Akin, a great son of Nigeria and a great son of Africa, in whom, in whom we are very proud. I can confidently say that Dr. Adeshina is not only Africa's optimist in chief, Adeshina is one of the most pan-African leaders of the 21st century. And if I am to describe Adeshina, in one paragraph, one paragraph, I would say, he knows the weight of his responsibility that rests upon his shoulders, and he carries it with grace 
not grace the wife, but with grace. He carries it with grace, with humility, and with a fierce determination to serve his continent above all else. His leadership is not measured in words spoken, but in the silent echoes of hearts he has touched, minds he has inspired, and lives he has transformed. That's Adesina. We are happy to see or to see you join the great ranks of His Excellency Kabombeki and Professor Wallace Oyinka as a recipient of the 2023 Awolowo Prize for Leadership. It is my hope that this prize will remind you that your efforts are recognized, cherished, and saluted. It is also my hope that this prize will also inspire to go further in realizing your vision of transforming the African Development Bank and positively impacting lives across our continent. Lastly, but not least, and in a high degree of respect, I also wish to recognize Dr. Adesina's better half and her contribution. While some say behind every successful man there is a woman, I can say in this case that we confidently say, besides the highly successful Adesina, there is lovely wife Grace. My apology, I should also recognize His Excellency, the Vice President of Nigeria, Senator Kashim Chetima. I recognize you, sir. I'm sorry. So I thank you very much for your kind attention and congratulations, my brother. Thank you. Our very sincere thanks, President Samir Suluhus Hassan, for your special remarks and in your own inimitable way, leading by example and inspiring countless young people across Africa who desire to make a difference in their respective circles of influence. As President Suluhu Hassan returns to her seat, I believe that it is really noteworthy that Her Excellency today presides over one of the fastest growing economies in Africa. And if in doubt and if in business, I say visit. A visit will convince you because Tanzania is open for business. We will now hear from a former Nigerian president and head of state who has worked for, continues to aspire towards, and believe in the Nigeria of our collective dreams. Though out of office, he is not out of touch. And in his characteristic and unique way, and I underline that, 
he continues to push the boundaries of what is possible to help Nigeria reach its full potential. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Chief Dr. Olusegun of Passenger GCFR. Well, I gather again, um, I will commit that to a faux pas of the head, not of the heart. I gather that um, Chief Obasanjo has had to leave. So, so we will transition and move on as we speak. Well, aside from former presidents, we also have with us other African heads of state. And it is our honor today to welcome His Excellency, President Azali Asumani. President Goodluck Jonathan has already provided a video tribute and will not be speaking. But again, we recognize you, sir. Please give him a warm round of applause. Thank you for your leadership, sir. We have with us today His Excellency, President Azali Asumani, the President of the Union of Comoros and the outgoing chairperson of the African Union. Please give President Asumani a warm Lagos welcome, or a warm Nigeria welcome, I would say. And as he comes towards the podium, I would also ask that our trans translation team also be on hand to provide support. Excellence, Majesté, mes chères sœurs et frères, chefs d'État et de gouvernement. Excellence, mes chers frères, Docteur Adessina, président de la Banque africaine de développement. Excellence, Madame Grace Adessina, très très belle soeur. Messieurs les anciens présidents du Nigeria, gouverneurs et sénateurs. Sénateurs et gouverneurs. Honorable assistance, mesdames et messieurs, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Distinguished participants, assalamu alaikum, good day, God bless. Je voudrais, pour commencer, remercier chaleureusement le président de la République du Nigeria, mon frère Ahmed Tinubu, son gouvernement et le peuple fer du Nigeria pour l'accueil fraternel et bienveillant qui nous est réservé dans ce très grand et beau pays. Before anything else, I would like to thank the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, my brother, His Excellency Ahmed Tinubu, his government, the brotherly people of Nigeria, for the fraternal warm hospitality we have received since coming to this great and beautiful country. Je voudrais ensuite vous dire 
l'immense plaisir que j'ai à me joindre à vous aujourd'hui pour honorer ensemble le docteur Adessina, un ami, un frère proche qui reçoit ce jour le prestigieux prix Aolo pour le leadership. I would also like to say just how delighted I am to join you today to honor Dr. Adeshina, very close friend and brother, who today receives the prestigious Awolo World Prize for Leadership. Compte tenu de l'admiration et du respect que ma fille, ma famille et moi-même portons au Dr. Adeshina, je suis venu à cet événement en compagnie de ma chère épouse, Madame Azali, la première dame de l'Union des Comores. It is because of the admiration and respect that my family and I have for Dr. Adeshina that I decided to come to this august ceremony accompanied by my dear wife, the First Lady of the Union of Comores. Nous avons tenu à venir ensemble pour participer à cette cérémonie et notamment rendre hommage à Madame Grace, la chère épouse du Dr Adesina, qui a constamment joué un rôle clé dans le succès de son époux qui est à l'honneur aujourd'hui. We decided to come together to this, to this ceremony and in particular by doing so to pay tribute to Mrs. Grace Adeshina, Dr. Adeshina's dear wife, who has constantly stood by her husband and fostered his achievement of his many successes, whom we are all honoring today. Honorable assistance, mesdames et messieurs, je tiens à saluer le choix pertinent de la Fondation Aolo et du Comité de sélection du prix pour proposer la candidature du Dr. Adesina à ce prix. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to comment the decision of the World War Foundation and its prize selection committee to nominate Dr. Adesina for the Awolo World Prize for Leadership. En tant que président de l'Union des Comores, depuis quelques années maintenant, mais aussi en tant que président de l'Union africaine dont le mandat vient de prendre fin, j'ai travaillé en étroite collaboration avec le docteur Adesina. As president of the Union of Commerce for several years now, but also as the outgoing chair of the African Union, I have had the opportunity to work very closely with Dr. Adesina. Son leadership exemplaire à la tête du groupe de la Banque africaine de développement, a eu un impact considérable sur notre continent africain. His exemplary leadership at the helm African Development Bank Group has had considerable impact on our African country. C'est en, en effet, après sa prise de fonction, le travail et le programme des institutions de financement du développement de premier plan ont eu un impact positif. Plus de 335 millions de personnes à travers notre continent. Barely seven years after assuming duty, the work and programs of this premier development finance institution, under the leadership of Dr. Adeshina, had positive impact. More than 35 million people, across, more than 335 people, million people across the country. En tant que dirigeant respecté dans le monde entier, le Dr. Adesina s'efforce sans relâche de promouvoir, mettre en valeur et faire avancer l'agenda 2063 de l'Afrique, ses intérêts et les nombreuses opportunités économiques notre continent. As a leader respected the world over, Dr. Adeshina has worked tirely, tirelessly to promote, highlight, push, and advance 
Africa's 2063 agenda, as well as Africa's interests and the many economic opportunities that the continent holds. Le Dr. Adesina a une capacité incroyable, exemplaire, à rassembler les dirigeants pour qu'ils se consacrent et s'engagent dans des initiatives qui transforment l'Afrique au quotidien. Dr. Adesina a une incroyable capacité à bring les leaders together, à dédier et à commit themselves à des initiatives qui transforment l'Afrique sur un daily basis. Grand visionnaire, innovateur et pragmatique, le docteur Adesina a dirigé de main de maître l'initiative porteuse de transformation de la Banque africaine de développement. Dr. Adesina est un grand visionnaire, innovateur et pragmatique. Il a donc therefore masterfully led transformative initiatives that have given the African Development Bank a facelift. L'une d'entre elles est le Forum pour l'investissement en Afrique, qui est devenu en quelques années la première plateforme d'investissement dans notre continent. One of these is the Africa Investment Forum, which, in just a few years, has become the leading investment platform in Africa. Depuis son lancement en 2018, le Forum pour l'investissement en Afrique a mobilisé 180 milliards de dollars d'intérêts d'investissement en Afrique, donc plus de 15 milliards de dollars pour la construction du corridor autoroutier Lagos-Abidjan qui transformera les économies de l'Afrique de l'Ouest. Since it was launched in 2018, the Africa Investment Forum has mobilized over 180 billion dollars of investment interest in Africa, including over 15 billion dollars for the construction of the Lagos-Abidjan Highway Corridor that will transform the economies of all of West Africa. Une autre initiative similaire que le président a destiné à contribuer à promouvoir, à défendre, à développer et le désert pour pouvoir du désert à l'électricité. Cette initiative vise à développer 10 000 mégawatts d'énergie solaire qui fourniront l'électricité à 250 millions de personnes dans la zone sahélienne de l'Afrique. Another similar initiative that I would like to mention that uh, Dr. Adeshina has shepherded promoted, championed, and developed is the Desert to Power Initiative. This initiative aims to develop 10,000 megawatts of solar energy, which will provide electricity to 250 million people in the Sahel zone of Africa. Une fois achevé, cette initiative deviendra la plus grande zone solaire au monde. Once completed, Africa's Sahel region will become the world's largest solar zone. Leader charismatic, le Dr. Adesina est sans aucun doute un grand mobilisateur qui rassemble d'autres leaders pour relever avec succès des défis très complexes. Dr. Adesina is a charismatic leader. Dr. Adesina is undoubted great mobilizer who brings together various leaders to successfully tackle very complex challenges. En tant que leader respecté dans le monde entier, le Dr. Adesina est passé maître dans l'art de structurer des partenariats et des alliances stratégiques en Afrique et dans le monde. As a respected leader throughout the world, Dr. Adesina is a master the art of structuring strategic partnerships or alliance, strategic partnerships and alliances in Africa and across the world. L'une de ses grandes qualités de dirigeant reste sa modestie, mais surtout sa capacité innée à mettre en œuvre des programmes qui transforment la vie 
2 millions de personnes en Afrique et dans le monde. One of his greatest leadership qualities is his innate ability to implement programs that transform the lives of billions of people in Africa and across the world. Il a prouvé à maintes reprises qu'il est un dirigeant sensible à la cause de l'Afrique. Il a prouvé aussi qu'il est un dirigeant au cœur sensible qui se suit profondément des gens. He has proven time and again that he is a sensitive leader with Africa always at his heart. He has proven time and again that he is a leader with a sensitive a leader who is people centered. Je dirais pour conclure que l'Afrique gardera toujours en mémoire vos réalisations, vos réalisations comme étant celles de l'un des meilleurs dirigeants qu'elle ait connu. Mon frère Adessina, nous sommes très fiers de toi et notre continent l'Afrique est aussi fier de toi. In conclusion, I would like to say that Africa always remember your achievement as those of one of finest one of the finest leaders it has ever known. Avant de vous dire merci, Adesina est un frère de cœur. Et on dit qu'on choisit les amis, mais on choisit pas les frères. Il y a un secret entre lui et moi, et je lui laisse le choix de choisir le moment et le lieu de dire ce secret. My brother Adeshina, we are very proud of you, and the continent is very proud of you. But before I conclude, I would like to say that you are my brother at heart. We are together, and uh, each time you want us to meet, we will do that. The choice is you. Toutes mes félicitations, je vous remercie. My hearty congratulations. Thank you very much, President Azali Asamani, for your kind words and for your strategic leadership of the African Union, following, especially following your recent handover of the baton as chairman of that distinguished institution. Excellence, dis excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we are also exceptionally honored to have with us today an African stateswoman of immense stature a globally recognized technocrat and a diplomat. She is also a woman of many firsts. Please welcome the president of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, Her Excellency Saleh Wakdwedi. I, I can understand for our men presidents a tepid applause, but I think for our women presidents and heads of state, we certainly can do a whole lot better. Excellence, président de l'Union des Comores et président sortant de l'Union africaine et ma chère sœur, Madame Azali Asmani, Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, good to see you, sir. Madame Prime Minister of Togo, um, Excellencies, former presidents. Uh, Royal Highnesses, my brother, the President of the African Development Bank, and uh, his dear wife, 
my sister Grace, additional or dignitaries present. Let me start by congratulating the Awolowo Foundation for what it has been doing through its flagship Award Prize. Someone as a catalyst for even greater strides in leadership excellence, fostering the spirit of unity, innovation, and service to humanity. Thus, recognizing and celebrating the sons and daughters of Africa who excel in leadership. Congratulations are in order because it is important to recognize and celebrate those who, oh, those whose work has had an impact on the many lives they have touched. It shows that honoring a person who deserves, it's not a forgotten value, that recognition is in fact a positive value. Those who have been successful prove their achievements need indeed to be honored because great leaders are not just made but discovered because they have done real things, visible, tangible, me measurable. Leading is not an easy task. Such leaders need to be lifted up in public. As Chief Obafemi Awolowo said, and I quote, if political leaders led by example, the people would follow suit, end of quote. We have a good opportunity now to fast track peace, security, and development on our continent. For a peaceful and developed continent, it's indeed time, long overdue, to our acts together. Such leaders should and would be role models, mentors for others to look up to. We are gathered here to celebrate and honor such a person the 2024 laureate of the Awolo Prize for Leadership, who went through a careful, detailed, and rigorous screening process, the president of the African Development Bank, Dr. Akinyumi Adeshina. I join those who have praised this amazing son of Africa. Our presence here is a testimony of the respect and high esteem that Dr. Adeshina is held in our countries and indeed, indeed across the continent. Because as I said earlier, inspirational leader, a leader who is selfless, highly committed, a visionary, and who, one who is driven in uh, the lives of millions of people with tenacity, and with relentless pursuit of excellence. Provision of innovative solution is uh, also what characterized Dr. Adeshina. Today, it's you that we are honoring and what I have said. You have led the institution, the African Development Bank, to global heights and provided incredible visibility for what today is a globally recognized and trusted institution. I think we will all agree that the African Development Bank has been transformed into a truly global financial institution. To name some of the achievements, ADB was ranked the best multilateral development bank in the world by global finance. It has been also ranked the most transparent financial institution in the world by Publish What You Fund. You would agree that it's a great testament of Dr. Adishina's remarkable leadership driven by transparency and accountability. I thank his exceptional teams he has put together. In Ethiopia, just to mention a few things, ADB is a brand name. It has been a long-standing and trusted partner since its creation, and we have great stories to tell. Since 
Dr. Adeshina took the presidency of the bank through the support of the ADB, which provided us with access to heat tolerant wheat varieties. Ethiopia, in spite of the many challenges, we have been, we have, has become a producer of wheat, leading to self-sufficiency in only four years. The area cultivated under heat tolerant heat varieties in Ethiopia has expanded from 5,000 hectares in 2018 to over 1.2 million hectares in um, 2003. We need this hope and concrete action to showcase that Africa can become indeed self-sufficient in food. Dr. Adeshina's ability to easily connect with people, it has been said by the pre previous speakers, has helped drive development success in Africa. Because one needs a highly trusted and respected global leader to do that. We should also remember the Africa Adaptation Acceleration Program that the ADB and the Global Center on Adaptation develop under his leadership. Its aim is to mobilize 25 billion US dollars to support African countries to adapt to climate change. This shows his ability to provide innovative solutions to very complex uh, situations, complex problems, and by so doing, turn challenges into opportunities. Today, we are celebrating the son of Africa for what he has done, um, which is not only as president of the ADB, for being a visionary, for being able to rally support, promote and protect Africa's interests, and above all, make his critical contribution in projecting Africa's interests and a more positive image of the continent globally. Akin is a junior brother to me. So, Junior Bro, hearty congratulations to you and to your best friend, partner, and my dear sister's wife, Grace Adeshina. Congratulations. We are proud of you. Long life and success to you and to your dear wife, Grace. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency Sally Wak Zwerdi, for your remarks and for continuing to be a force for good on our continent. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. To help set up a video presentation on the 2023 Obafemi Awolowo Pri Prize in Leadership Laureate, please join me in welcoming all the way from the Netherlands. To my mind, one of the most visionary and certainly most influential global leaders of our time, Professor Patrick Vekujin, the CEO of the Global Center on Adaptation and the Chancellor of the University of Nairobi, Kenya.
again it's like faux pas again I say that is a, an omission of the head and not of the heart I've been told that I actually need to recognize not only recognize but invite to the podium representing the president of Togo, His Excellency Faroui Nassibé, Mrs. Victoria Dogwe, the Prime Minister of Togo, to give a few brief remarks. And as she does so, could we also have the translation team on the podium. And we'll come back to our next speaker in just a few moments. Please give Her Excellency a warm round of applause. President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Your Excellencies, Head of State, Your Excellencies, former Nigerian President, dear Dr. Adesina and my dear sister Grace, distinguished guests, all protocol observed, ladies and gentlemen, please accept the friendly and fraternal greeting from His Excellency. Therefore, it's President of the Togolese Republic. Mr. President would have loved to be in the Nigerian capital in Abuja. Mr. President would have loved to be in our midst today, but held up at the last minute. He insulted me with the honor to represent him at this magnificent ceremony. Now, let me deliver the message in French. <laughs> Le prix à Wolo du leadership est non seulement une reconnaissance des qualités de celui qui le reçoit, mais aussi une célébration de l'héritage très riche que nous a laissé Chief Aolo de regretter mémoire. The Awolo Award Leadership Award not only acknowledges the qualities of the recipient, but also celebrates the rich legacy of the late chief Awolowo. Cher Dr. Adesina, cher frère, au nom du chef de l'État togolais, à mon nom propre, mais aussi au nom du gouvernement togolais, je vous félicite très chaleureusement pour votre leadership exceptionnel et pour la confiance que vous inspirez, toutes choses qui vous ont permis d'être choisi pour recevoir ce prix prestigieux. My dear brother, Dr. Adesina, on behalf of the Head of State, on my own behalf, and on behalf of the, to the government of the Republic of Togo, I wish to heartily congratulate you, my brother, on your being nominated for this prestigious award. Mesdames et Messieurs, toutes les questions occupées et qu'il continue d'occuper, Dr. Adesina a démontré des qualités de leadership qui inspirent tout Africain, tant les jeunes que les moins jeunes. Et ce type de leadership pragmatique qui, avec détermination, fait avancer les sujets tout en faisant preuve d'innovation afin de toujours faire prévaloir les intérêts africains. Throughout his career, during the positions he has held in the past, 
and those he continues to hold today. Dr. Adeshina has demonstrated leadership qualities that, that inspire the young and not so young peoples of Africa. This is the kind of pragmatic leadership that, that enables us to move forward while also innovating and ensuring that Africa's interests are upheld. En tant que président de la Banque africaine de développement, Dr. Adesina a su impulser et conduire des réformes audacieuses, faisant de la Banque africaine de développement une institution financière forte et respectée de tous. As president of the African Development Bank, Dr. Adesina has initiated bold reforms which have transformed the ADB into a globally respected financial institution. Je voudrais en particulier saluer sa capacité à aborder les questions complexes avec perspicacité, créativité et passion. Dr. Adesina n'hésite pas à donner des conseils avisés. Chaque échange avec lui est l'occasion de voir émerger des idées nouvelles qui ouvrent de nouveaux la transformation de nos économies et les adresser. L'agriculture et la sécurité alimentaire, l'énergie et l'accès à l'eau, la croissance verte et l'industrialisation durable. Allow me to particularly pay tribute to his ability to tackle complex issues with insight, creativity, and passion. Dr. Adeshina does not hesitate to provide advice, counsel. Each discussion you have with him is an opportunity to hear new ideas, to have new horizons opened. He has the ability to identify and address the sectors that are at the heart of the transformation of our economies. These include agriculture, food, food security, energy, access to water, green growth, and sustainable industrialization. Grâce à des leaders comme Dr. Adesina, nous élaborons notre vision, nos solutions, et au final, notre narratif. Car aujourd'hui, plus qu'hier, nous ne voulons plus que d'autres bâtissent des solutions à notre place. Merci d'être le promoteur en chef de l'Afrique, cher Dr. Adesina. Thanks to Dr. Adesina's leadership, thanks to leaders like him, we are crafting our own vision. We are coming up with our own solutions and ultimately our own narrative. Because today, more than ever before, we no longer want others to shape our solutions for us. Thanks to you. In chief. Au Togo, nous considérons le président de la BAD comme un compatriote. In Togo, we consider him Togolese as a compatriot. Il y est chez lui et est toujours considéré comme un ambassadeur de notre pays et de la vision du chef de l'État qui veut transformer l'économie togolaise en particulier en transformant notre agriculture avec comme objectif la sécurité alimentaire et accroître les revenus des agriculteurs. Like I said, in Togo, he is considered a compatriot. He is at home in Togo and he is always regarded as an ambassador for our country and indeed for the vision of the head of state who seeks to transform the economy by amongst other things culture to achieve food security and increase farmers revenues avec uh, dr Isidan, nous avons entamé un projet structurant et innovant qui est la coupole de la région de la cara et qui s'étend sur des milliers d'hectares. De même, nous avons développé un projet de, sur les chaînes de valeur agricole, en particulier pour les jeunes. Un projet qui a transformé 
les jeunes en agriculteurs accomplis et prospères et qui a boosté la production agricole de produits biologiques, tant et si bien que notre pays est devenu le premier exportateur de soja bio vers l'Union européenne. With Dr. Adeshina's support, we have launched a transformative and innovative project that is the Kara Regional Agropole, which covers thousands of hectares. We have also designed a project on agricultural value chains, particularly for young people. This project has turned around the lives of young people, making them prosperous farmers and boosting agricultural production of organic produce. So much so that our country has become the leading exporter of organic soya to the European Union. Recently, lors de l'Africa Investment Forum, nous avons été impressionnés par les efforts qu'il a personnellement déployés et par l'appui apporté à notre pays dans la mobilisation des investisseurs autour des projets de construction de chemins de fer et de corridors de transport au Togo. At the recent Africa Investment Forum, we were immensely impressed by his personal efforts and commitments in support of our country in mobilizing investors around projects to build Togo's railways and transport corridors. Chers frères, Dr. Adesina, le chef de l'État togolais, votre frère, votre ami, me charge de vous remercier et de vous encourager, car il reste encore beaucoup à faire ensemble au bénéfice de nos populations. My dear brother, Dr. Adeshina, the head of state, your brother and friend, has instructed me to thank you and encourage you because there is still a lot we can do together for the benefit of our people. Continue to inspire the hope on our continent. Keep on inspiring hope on our continent. Félicitations à vous et à votre chère épouse Grace pour cette reconnaissance bien méritée couronnée par le prix à Oloro du leadership qui vous est décerné. Congratulations to you and your dear wife Grace on this well-deserved recognition crowned by the Awolowo Prize for Leadership. Once more, Dr. Adesina, congratulations to you for your strong and impacting leadership. Keep on the amazing job you are doing. God bless you. Merci beaucoup, Excellence Premier Ministre Victoire Dobry. Nous sommes reconnaissants. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for joining us today and for being kind. As mentioned earlier, to help set up a video presentation of the 2023 Obafemi Awolowo Prize in Leadership Laureate, please join me in welcoming all the way from the Netherlands, a good friend, and to my mind, one of the most visionary and influential global leaders of our time, Professor Patrick Bakujan, CEO of the Global Center on Adaptation and the Chancellor of the University of Nairobi, Kenya. Please give him a warm Lagos and Nigeria welcome. And as he makes his way to the podium, I just want to say that I do recognize in the audience the former governor of Ondo State, my state, His Excellency Olusha Kumimiko, as well as Iba Gani Abiodun Ike Adams, the RA. Patrick, the podium is yours. Go. Your Excellencies, you may wonder, you may wonder. Where is our lunch? But climate change is stealing the food of Africa's table. Let me repeat. Climate change is stealing the food of Africa's table. These were the words I first learned from an African leader when he spoke at an event 
at the United Nations General Assembly. On that bright day, in late September 2019, this African leader issued a challenge kings, president, and to other global leaders. This African leader stated, we're all living in the eye of the climate emergency, but Africa, Africa is ground zero. This African leader then continued by saying, in Africa, we may be the victims of the climate breakdown, but we are not beggars. With the largest share of uncultivated arable land worldwide, its youngest population, this African leader indicated Africa needs partners. So, this African leader said that Africa should reduce the food import bill. He was very bold by saying, well, it should not only feed itself, it should feed the world. So when that particular meeting at the United Nations concluded, all presidents, all kings, all majesties, all other global leaders were mesmerized by one person by one person only, and that obviously is Dr. Adesina. I call him my dear friend, my big brother, my partner. And interestingly enough, the following morning, 4 a.m. in the morning, I received a phone call from Dr. Adesina. Patrick, let's be bold here. Why don't we jointly develop the largest, the biggest adaptation program, not just for Nigeria, not just for Africa, but for the world? And now a few years later, with the support of all these heads of state here, from Tanzania to Comoros, from Ethiopia to Togo, from Kenya to, to Senegal to Nigeria, this Africa Adaptation uh, Acceleration Program, the President of Ethiopia indicated it, is delivering because, dear Akeem, $25 billion of climate finance is on the table, it's flowing because of you. Millions of smallholder farmers from Makweni to Maputo have access to drought tolerant crops because of you, President Adesina. Billions of dollars of infrastructure from Mombasa to Kinshasa, from the highlands in Ethiopia to the islands in Comoros are now climate resilient because of you. Africa can feed the world because of you. Africa will feed the world. It's you, President Adesina, who taught all of us that the future belongs to those in it. And if you, excellencies, let me share a very personal note, which I would norm normally draw attention in this setting, but it illustrates something very particular, the deep humanity of this man who I'm humbled to call my friend. Akeen, you were the first one who called me a few years ago when my wife was rushed to a hospital with a life-threatening illness. It was 4 a.m. in the morning, again, and I said to you, you never sleep? But you wished for God's mercy on my wife's life. You offered God's blessing for my family. And you said, Grace and I, we're with you. Whatever you need, we're here for you. So, as we celebrate today, let's call it an outstanding individual. As we celebrate today, Dr. Adesina's outstanding contributions, it is very clear to me 
Big Brother, you embodies the bold commitment to the late chief Obafemi Awolowo. Your commitment and his commitment to the most vulnerable in society, your commitment and his commitment to those living on the front lines of the climate emergency, your commitment and his commitment to those who go to bed hungry. So thank you, Dr. Adesina, to inspire us, to strive for excellence. Thank you to work tirelessly towards a brighter tomorrow for Africa today. Because of you, dear Akin, we know, we know, I know, that by staying focused on our mission, that by keeping our eyes on the prize, we know and you know that this great continent is the engine of the global economy that is unstoppable. And with leaders like you, sir, Africa is unstoppable. I thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Professor Fedkujian. And on that note, I will ask the multimedia team to cue a short video presentation on the laureates before we hear from the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, as well as the laureate himself. Multimedia team, over to you. I hear in my ears, and I feel in my heart, it calls the need to make things happen for those that I don't see, but I'm accountable for and I'm responsible for. So it's an inner thing for me that I will always remain restless until I'm able to uh, make sure that things work at scale for majority millions and millions of people. I'm never satisfied unless I can get that goal. This is a story. A story of a fervent leader. Exploring the impact and the unique style of an African leader who shaped the nation. I think in my family they have Oriki, but I guess the only thing that I remember from my parents is just that, um, you know, I come from a family of, um, I guess, warriors. I guess that's why they gave me a name, uh, Akimumi, and uh, which means that the name Aki is the name they used to give in the Yoruba culture to warriors. So. Uh, I love warriors. I guess that's as much as Uriki as I know. He's a fighter. I tell him he's living his name. A king, a warrior, an overcomer. And yes, he's a fighter. And he likes challenges and he does everything to overcome. The boat high thing was something I did in a very determined way. Because when I came to Nigeria and uh, as Minister of Agriculture, I realized that people were taking agriculture as a way of life, not as a business. I thought, how can I make agriculture cool uh, for young people? And so I just woke up one morning and I said, okay, I'm going to change for all these ties to just wearing bow ties. First, I'll be distinct. Two, you'll make them think, is it really a Minister of Finance or is it really a Minister of Agriculture? So what's this thing? So I wanted agriculture to be seen as a serious thing, cool thing, sexy thing, uh, and, and, and a real business that, and I succeeded. We succeeded with that. And so that's where the bow tie thing came and it just stuck. And in the beginning, it was actually my wife that bought all the bow ties and she tied them for me because I didn't even know how to tie them then. My husband is someone who truly has God-given um, positivity <laughs> that can do things, that can do spirit. If you want him, if you want to challenge him, tell him he can't do it. And that's it. And that's, he will have to prove to you, I can. That's, you know, the warrior spirit in him. You know, God gives you oxygen, um, big oxygen or small oxygen. It doesn't really matter. Since you're going to have your oxygen expire at a particular given point in time in life, why not use that 
oxygen to do big things why well, use it to do small things so i don't do small things i do big things to create transformative change in the lives of people and sometimes there are risky things you do but look life itself is risky so why not take risk for others in the heart of africa a leader's legacy shines bright like the baobab tree their wisdom and courage provide shade for generations. Akimumi Adeshio's unyielding spirit and unwavering vision inspire hope, illuminating a path to freedom and unity. His spark ignites a flame of resilience and determination, casting a warm glow across the continent. <laughs> Well, I would unhesitatingly describe uh, Aki Adeshina as a transformational and inspirational leader. He has demonstrated that during his term of office as Federal Minister of Agriculture and his term of office, which is continuing as President of the African Development Bank. He is a team leader. Is a leader that uh, carries his uh, team along. You see, uh, like Yoruba say, Oritutu Oshoro Kujo. A traditional is somebody as a leader who has been able to manage uh, what I call life helps. And that means a lot. He has made a tremendous impact as a minister of this country. Agriculture became, during that time, something that is no longer seen as just an ordinary farmer going to the farm, but the use of technology, knowledge to advance farming started during Akin Adeshina's time. I have worked with Dr. Akin Adeshina at close range when he was an uh, agricultural minister in uh, President Goodlord Jonathan's administration. I was a member of the Presidential Agricultural Committee. And uh, I saw him at close range. I saw how he was able to mobilize his vision and get him to buy into it. All of us on the council bought into his vision. And I think you should call it an agri -pronous. And uh, he got all of us to key to it and uh, to support the transformation of agriculture and more importantly, to make agriculture sexy, as he used to say it in Nigeria. As the governor of Central Bank, I had been concerned about the failure of banks to lend to the real sector. Uh, as a chief risk officer before that, I had found it very difficult to lend to agriculture because of the risks. And I saw this Nigerian who not only knew the field, but who was determined to spread that knowledge across the continent. He's someone who seeks to make the maximum impact in whatever role he finds himself. So he's a natural leader in that, in that, in that respect. I remember when we had the, the first major flood in recent years, in 2012, where a lot of our farmlands were impacted severely. And some businessmen came to me and said, Mr. President, uh, we should give a waiver, let them bring rice and other grains into the country because there will be starvation. I was actually worried about that. So I sent for additional immediately. Additional said, no, we're not going to give waivers. We're going to deal with the situation. And that we have some grains in our reserves, we're going to release them and we're going to dry season farming immediately. And before we exhaust the grains, we'll be harvested. And of course, with that devastating flood of 2012, there was no lack of grains, no lack of food in Nigeria. During the rice revolution, which he introduced in the country, actually the rice revolution is his own policy, is his own program, he introduced it in Nigeria. Uh, I could remember when there is a need for millers to have enough party to process, and then there was no enough party in Nigeria. Mr. Adeshina took it upon himself. Instead of allowing uh, middlemen to import the rice, 
he gave all the millers allocation to import paddy rice so that they can process in Nigeria. You don't need to come to the, his office. You don't. In fact, I I was called somewhere. I was somewhere else. I was called and said I should come and collect my allocation. I was so surprised. Why should I? Why? So this is the kind of person we have in addition. To look at the work of the she, in the work of the she, 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 I just sent a land, I have banned, she will have young Kojira Maka, no one. Not Aki, and I got that day, man. Doctor Aki Adishino, for me on this throne of Odudua, is a leader of leaders. God actually took more time creating him, and that's the truth. So many records he has broken. The way he handled the sector in Nigeria, the agricultural sector. Look at what he's doing in African Development Bank. You can't just stand up and say you want to break his record. He was a minister of um, uh, agriculture back in Nigeria, and we have seen the impact he has made. Uh, and this was in collaboration with. Uh, stakeholders. You look at uh, he is always in dialogue with commissioners in, in, in different states. He understands the terrain very well and uh, through this dialogue, this is this contact with various uh, stakeholders in agriculture across the country. Uh, I think the impact we felt when he was the minister compares to no other minister. In, 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 in the country. He is also very you know, respectful uh, to uh, you know, all his elders and also those who serve under him. I, I worked with Dr. Deshina for a number of years and I always felt it was remarkable the way he brought us all together um, to work towards achieving a common goal. He's a leader for the future. He's he envisions the future and goes after it deliberately, intentionally, and in a very strong and scientific um, approach. If I were to choose one word to describe Dr. Adishina, I would go through the entire dictionary and not find one. Dr. A has been so impactful to so many people. He's impacted so many of us, not just in Africa, but all around the world. But if I had to choose a word to describe him, out of so many other words, I would choose transformation. He's transformed millions of lives. He has done so and he continues to do so. I would use the word service. I would use the word excellence. I would use the word visionary. I would use the words um, inspiring and encouraging. I love the fact that Dr. Adishino is a true African. He doesn't come from any particular location. He really embodies the voice of Africa and speaks to a vision of the Africa that we have always known and believed in. I see myself as a Nigerian, proudly Nigerian. I love being, you know, I always say that I will live as a Nigerian, die as a Nigerian, but I'm also a Pan-Africanist, deeply Pan-Africanist. I, I, I love this continent. I love the responsibility that I'm given. I'm aware of uh, the, um, the, the demands of history, uh, not because of the, my nationality, but because of the responsibility I have been given to do for the country. In the last few years, we've been able to impact on lives of more than 335 million people, and more is still going to come um, in the next 18 months uh, or so that I still have here. Um, I'm, I'm proud of my uh, support from my country, uh, but most importantly, I am proud of the collective support I got all across Africa and beyond. À travers nos nombreux échanges, j'ai découvert un homme ouvert au dialogue et mû d'une attention élevée envers ses frères africains 
autant que d'une grande compréhension des défis qui transcendent nos peuples. J'ai aussi découvert à travers son engagement ainsi que ses réalisations un je sais discuter avec l'agent, avec un temps apaisé, une paix à sur les gens. Donc ce côté-là, quand même, c'est toujours un plaisir de s'entretenir avec lui, que ce soit au téléphone, que ce soit à les yeux et les yeux. Parce qu'il prend tout un sourire sur ce que vous dites. Et puis aussi, il est clair et sincère. It has been a pleasure and a privilege to work closely with you for many years and see the fruits of your leadership. You steered the African Development Bank to feed, power, and integrate the continent. You have been a fantastic partner for us at the IMF to help countries strengthen macroeconomic and financial policies and also to channel more financing during exceptionally challenging times. Aki is a visionary with a strong intellect, a rare combination of vision and action, someone full of innovative ideas but who also puts ideas into action through practical programs and projects. Akin is charming, charismatic, and above all, capable. He's a doer, he gets things done. He's a genuine front of house performer who inspires people and uh, delivers. The implementation of the High Fives initiatives underscores his strategic approach in which he prioritizes critical areas like energy access, agricultural transformation, industrialization, infrastructure development, and improving living standards. These initiatives reflect his multifaceted approach, diverse emphasizing sustainable development and improved quality of life for our people. If I were to come up with one word to describe uh, my friend Akin, I'd say it was commitment. Commitment to the African Development Bank, commitment to his co continent, but most importantly, commitment to the poorest and most marginalized people on the continent and in the world. I commend you for leading the African Development Bank's swift response to the COVID pandemic and the food crisis. And during your leadership, the bank has responded in dynamic ways to address Africa's diverse development challenges. He embodies a rare combination of vision, passion, and strategic thinking. I've seen this through our shared commitment to empowering Africa's youth. After years of leadership, what endures is an uncommon blend of optimism and pragmatism. He believes deeply in Africa's potential, recognizing the complex challenges that the continent faces. And that allows him to champion bold initiatives like the Feed Africa strategy, while ensuring that they're grounded in very sound economic principles. I was so an article referring him as Africa's optimist in chief. And this may be an apt description. His passion and commitment to Africa's development is laudable. This perspective is not only refreshing, but has practical significance in creating a new Leadership is that it should be. Why do I say this? Because in the many years that we have known one another, and work together. You, dear as a king, have always, always led by example. Dr. Adeshina's tenures in top global roles are a testament to his trusted leadership. But while his resume is incredibly impressive, his leadership style even exceeds his positions and his accolades. I have always known Dr. Adeshina as somebody who is steadfast in pursuing the good of people and communities, the reformation of systems, and the care of our shared Resources. My favorite achievement. I guess you probably expect me to talk about economics, but I think my my real achievement is is asking Grace to marry me and her saying yes. That's what I think is my real achievement. Um, <laughs> likes to hide and scare me, and it still works, you know, <laughs> because you know basically we're, we're the two in the house. I mean, when everyone's gone, and. Um, he, he does it, and I don't know how he gets me a lot of times. I mean, I should be able to anticipate that he would have gone upstairs, and I think he's gone upstairs, then I'm coming, but he's hiding in some corner and goes up, boom! <laughs> and it still works, he still does it, and it still works. <laughs> I still get scared sometimes, you know. I think that's very romantic. 
A leader's legacy is not in the monuments they build, but in the lives they touch and the future they inspire. Well, I'll put it this way. Um, you don't really work for legacy. Because I think that's a wrong way to look at life. But when I'm long gone, I guess if people just remember me, I was just a regular person who did inspire any effort to improve and transform the lives of people and was able to work with others to impact the lives of millions of people. That's enough for me. Now, uh, Dr. Adishina, don't let me get emotional there. That was very touching. Um, and a great way to be remembered when our time on this side um, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I want to ask the moderator of this event again, kindly ask for the indulgence and forgiveness also of our royal fathers, our political leaders, from all walks of life in Nigeria, your distinguished ex excellencies, I know we've gone a little longer than we had planned, and your time is precious. We take none of that for granted, but we're slowly coming to the close of our program this evening. There are a few elements that are very, very key that you don't want to miss, so kindly bear with us. Your program says that there will be a musical interlude um, it's my prerogative to scrap that till sometime later on so that we can move on with the rest of the program. If all, you're all in agreement, say aye. aye. Thank you very much. Very much appreciated. So it is now my pleasure to call on a friend of more than 30 years. He's a visionary leader indeed. He's an entrepreneur. He's a broadcaster's broadcaster. He is the chairman of Channels Television here in Nigeria. Of broadcasters, Mr. John Momo. Please welcome him as he comes to the podium to read a citation on behalf of the 2023 Laureate Dr. Akiomi Additional. Ladies and gentlemen, this man whom we are acknowledging today is a beacon of professionalism, innovation, and leadership. Through an unwavering commitment to excellence, strategic foresight, and a profound understanding of the complexities of global finance, this accomplished banker has played an instrumental role in shaping the modern banking landscape. Therefore, with great admiration and respect that I present the following citation, the testament to a career marked by remarkable achievements and an enduring legacy of positive impacts and both the industry and the communities it serves. Dr. Akimumi A. Adishina is the eighth elected president of the African Development Bank Group. He was first elected to the position on May the 28th, 2015 by the bank's board of governors at its annual meetings held in Abidjan, Côte d'Ivoire and historically, unanimously, re-elected in 2020. <clears throat> Dr. Adesina is a globally renowned development economist and agricultural development expert with more than 30 years of international experience. 
He graduated with a bachelor's degree in agricultural economics, first class honors, from the University of Ife, now Obafemi Awulawa University. That was in 1981. He was the first student to obtain a first class honors in agricultural economics in the university's history. <laughs> Dr. Adishina holds a master's degree in 1985 and a PhD in agricultural economics 1988 from Purdue University, United States, where he won the Outstanding PhD Thesis Award for that year. Three years later, in 1988, Dr. Adishina won the prestigious Rocky Feller Foundation Social Science Fellowship, which launched him into his international career. Dr. Adishina is a bold reformer. As Minister of Agriculture in Nigeria from 2011 to 2015, he turned the agricultural sector of Nigeria around within four years. Under his tenure, Nigeria ended 40 years of corruption in the fertilizer sector by, by developing and implementing an innovative electronic wallet system which directly provided 15 million farmers with subsidized farm inputs at scale using their mobile phones. The initiative effectively ended fertilizer corruption and transform the lives of farmers and communities. A firm believer in private sector-led growth, Dr. Adishino radically changed the perception of agriculture in Nigeria from that of a subsistence to a viable business that successfully attracted $5.6 billion in private sector investments. He also led financing initiatives to support youth engagement in agriculture and small and medium enterprises. Ultimately, under his leadership, Nigeria's food production expanded by an historic additional 21 million metric tons. Prior to his appointment as Minister of Agriculture, Dr. Adishino the vice, uh, was the Vice President Policy and Partnerships of the Alliance for a Green Revolution in Africa, AGRA, where he led several bold and innovative policy and finance initiatives that leveraged over $4 billion in bank finance commitments to Africa's agriculture sector. Working with African heads of states and ministers of finance, leaders in the commercial banking industry and central bank governors across several African countries, Dr. Adeshina successfully led one of the largest global efforts to leverage domestic bank finance for the agricultural sector. And prior to joining Agra in 2008, he had served as Associate Director and Regional Director for the Southern Africa Office of the Rockefeller Foundation for over a decade. He was Principal Economist for the West Africa Rice Development Association, 1990-95, Senior Economist and Social Science Coordinator for the International Institute for Tropical Agriculture, 1995 to 1998, and Assistant Principal Economist of the International Crops Research Institute for the Semi-Arid Tropics, 1988 to 1990. A prolific writer, Dr. Adishino has authored 70 scholarly publications on policy, agricultural development, and African development issues. He is a globally respected economist and has served as the president of the African Association of Agricultural Economists, as well as on the editorial board of several academic journals, including the International Journal of Agricultural Economists. He was awarded the Outstanding Black Agricultural Economist Award by the American Association of Agricultural Economists. He was a distinguished Africanist scholar at Cornell University, United States. As president of the African Development Bank, 
he launched in 2015 a bold strategy to transform the lives of Africans called the High Fives to light up and power Africa, feed Africa, integrate Africa, industrialize Africa, and improve the quality of life of the people of Africa. The High Fives have already impacted the lives, as you heard earlier, 335 million Africans. To attract alternative and increased investments into Africa, Dr. Adishna launched the Africa Investment Forum in 2018, the first of its kind, to attract global capital to support Africa's accelerated development. The unique investment forum, which has several African and global financial institutional partners, has become the premier investment marketplace for Africa, attracting up to $180 billion worth of investment interests to Africa. Dr. Adishino has received several distinctions and global awards, including the Yara Prize 2007 in Oslo, Norway, for his leadership in pioneering innovative approaches to improve ac access to agricultural inputs for African farmers. Distinguished Alumni Award from Purdue University USA in 2008. Distinguished Alumni Award in 2009 and the Grand Commander of Great Ife in 2013, both from the Obafemi Awolo University and Bollock Cast Communications Award USA for his global leadership on agricultural science and technology. Dr. Deshina has received several honorary doctorate awards globally, including Franklin and Marshall College, USA, Purdue University, USA, Michigan State University, Duke University, and the University of Alberta, Canada, the others, USA and the University of Alberta in Canada. And here in Africa, he has received honorary doctorates by major universities, including Makarere University, Uganda, Addis Ababa University, the American University of Nigeria, Obafemi Awolowo University, Nigeria, <laughs> Federal University of Technology, Akure, Nigeria, Boeing University, Veritas University, Bayero University, and the Nigerian Academy, and University of Lagos is missing from there. <laughs> In October 2017, his uh, alma mater, well, I think I just uh, punched something. In October 2017, his alma mater, Purdue University, USA, decorated him with its highest honor, the Order of the Griffin, a rare honor given only to 50 persons since 1893. <laughs> including, including Neil Armstrong, the first man to walk on the moon. In 2010, Dr. Adishina was appointed by the United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon as one of 17 world leaders to galvanize international support for the United Nations Millennium Development Goals. In 2019, the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres appointed Dr. Adishina as one of the 23 global leaders to help end hunger and malnutrition. He serves globally as one of the commissioners for the Global Climate Commission, co-chaired by Bill Gates and former United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon to tackle global climate change. And Dr. Adishina also serves on the Global Panel on Agriculture and Food Systems for Nutrition. Dr. Adishina has won several including the Forbes Africa Person of the Year for his bold reforms in Nigeria's agricultural sector. Nigeria's Leadership Newspapers 2013 Public Servant of the Year, 
Guardian of the Guardian Newspapers Man of the Year, um, and the Public Servant Award by the Leadership Newspaper for his bold policy reforms, transparency, and public accountability, and the Extraordinary Achievement Award by Silverbird Television Nigeria for his achievements as Nigeria's Minister of Agriculture. Also, the West African Institute of Public Health recognized Dr. Adishina with his 2020 Distinguished Fellowship Award for his innovative and successful efforts to curb the impacts of the coronavirus pandemic in Africa. At a national level, Dr. Adishina has been confirmed with Nigeria's second highest national honor, the Commander of the Order of the Niger, for his outstanding service to his country, Nigeria. In recognition of his outstanding leadership passion and dedication for accelerating African development, he's also been awarded the highest national honors of nine African countries, Senegal, Cameroon, Madagascar, Togo, Liberia, Niger, the Gambia, Djibouti, and Tunisia. In 2017, the World Food Prize Foundation awarded Dr. Additional the World Food Prize. Generally known as the Nobel Prize for Agriculture, Dr. Additional devoted two, the $250,000 Lurate Award to the establishment of the World Hunger Fighters Foundation to support Africa's youth in agriculture and to develop a new generation of world hunger fighters. And Bill Gates listed Dr. Additional's award of the World Food Prize and his gesture to use it to support the youth in Africa as one of the seven most encouraging moments in 2017. In 2017, Dr. Additional was ranked in the top 15 of the 100 most influential global leaders in multilateral development organizations. In 2019, Dr. Adishina was awarded several distinguished awards, including the prestigious Sunak Peace Prize in Seoul, South Korea, for his global leadership in, on agriculture, food security, transparency, and good governance. He, again, dedicated his 500 thousand dollar award prize to the World Hunger Fighters Foundation that he established to fight global hunger. He was awarded the Emeka Ayoku Lifetime Achievement Award of Outstanding International Icon by the Hallmarks of Labor Foundation, during which the very distinguished Chief Ayoku, former Commonwealth Secretary General said, and I quote him, even though I can't get his voice, Dr. Additional's work and leadership are legendary, unprecedented, and worthy of emulation. <laughs> Dr. Additional was also named the African of the Year by the All Africa Business Leaders Award in recognition of his bold leadership and the innovation of the Africa Investment Forum, which opened billions of dollars of investment into the continent. In 2019, Dr. Additional led the Africa Development Bank to achieve its highest capital increase since the bank's establishment in 1964, when shareholders raised the general capital of the bank from $93 billion to $208 billion. A historic, historic achievement for Africa. In 2020, Dr. Additional was re-elected to a second term as president of the African Development Bank Group with 100% of the votes of all 81 African and non-African shareholder countries. The first, the first such achievement in the history of, of the African Development Bank, a demonstration of global confidence in this outstanding leadership of the African Development Bank. In in 2023, Dr. Adishna and the President of Senegal convened the Feed Africa Summit, which attracted 34 African heads of state. And the President of Ireland and hundreds of ministers from within and outside Africa, and successfully 
mobilized $72 billion to tackling food security in Africa, the largest ever globally coordinated effort in Africa's history. Also in 2023, Dr. Adishina was named among the 100, 100 most influential Africans by the New African Magazine. And the leading reputation management firm, Reputation Poll International, has listed Dr. Adishina among the 100 most reputable people in the world. As you can see, these are monumental achievements which remind us of the power of leadership, of vision, of commitment to shaping a better future. This man, my friend and brother, Dr. Adishino, his journey is a beacon of inspiration, urging all of us to strive for greatness, lead with purpose, and leave a lasting legacy in our respective fields. All thanks to God, all thanks to his very graceful Yemisi, even though he's a very romantic man. Thank you very much, Dr. Adeshino. Congratulations. Thank you very much, John Mama. That tour de force of a citation in honor of a deserving 2023 Obafemi Awolowo Prize in Leadership Laureate Dr. Akiomi Adishina. Before we proceed, before we proceed, allow me to recognize the presence of the Governor of Kebi State, Dr. Nasir Idris ably represented by the Deputy Governor of Kebi State, Senator Omar Abubakar. And if I do not recognize our next dignitary, it simply means I will never be allowed to go home. And you'll understand that in a moment. Representing His Royal Highness, the Oshimawe of Ondo Kingdom, my father's birthplace, Oba Adesimbo, Victor Kiladejo, Adirile Ademefum, Kiladejo, Gino the Third. I would like to recognize the Lisa and Prime Minister of Ondo Kingdom, Chief Simeon Oguntime, O O N. Thank you very much, Prime Minister. At this point, we will now proceed with the award presentation, and I would like to kindly ask that their excellencies, as announced, come to the platform in a few moments to make the presentation of the award of the, of the Abafemi Awolowo Prize in Leadership Laureate Medal to Dr. Adishina. And in this order, may I invite to the podium the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Senator Kashim Shetima, Please give him a warm welcome as he makes his way to the podium. I think we can do a whole lot better. Come on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. His Excellency will be followed by His Excellency Ambassador Tokumbo Awolowo Dosumu, as well as His Excellency, the former Commonwealth Secretary General, Chief Emeka Anyoku, and last but certainly not the least, the former President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency General Yakubu Gowan. We need to ensure that the medal also um, arrives. Thank you very much on the platform. So at this point, I'm going to hand over proceedings to Her Excellency, Ambassador 
I want to watch this song to continue. Can we can ensure also that there's at least a table, a prop that these awards can be placed on. Here of that, I also want to invite to the platform the chair of this ceremony and event, Her Excellency, President Samia Suluhu Hassan. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for joining us. Please give Her Excellency a warm round of applause, please. will be receiving several awards marking this recognition. Please give the laureate a round of applause and also to present a gold medal to the honorary. We will now ask Her Excellency President Samia Suluhu to do the honors. <laughs> and that is a gold medal. It's a real gold medal. And we say jointly, collectively, congratulations, Dr. Akiomi Adishina. Thank you very much, Your Excellencies. Thank you very much. Could the Usher team please stand by the... Can I kindly ask our host governor, His Excellency, Sao Wulu to also join us on the podium for this presentation. Excellencies, we would we take a light on the music, please. Light on the music, light on the music, light on the music. We'd like to invite light on the music, please. We'd like to invite also Her Excellency Sally Wakzwedi, the president of Ethiopia, to also join us on the platform, as well as the president of Comoros, His Excellency Asubani. One of the 
oldest associates as well, Excellence. Victoire Dogwe, the Prime Minister of Togo, also kindly join us on the platform. One of the oldest associates of the late sage Chief Abafemi Awolowo was Chief Ayo Adibanjo, and we are truly honored that he is here with us today, and we invite him to join us on the platform for the honors. Chief Adibanjo. Okay. And Your Excellency, Chief Adibanjo, if you would also rather um, just be recognized, that's also wonderful, but we will do all we can to assist you off the platform. As your excellencies get ready to take your seats, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, kindly be seated. It is not often that one has the privilege and the honor to be in the presence of a living legend. Ladies and gentlemen, kindly once again give. Um, distinguished ladies and gentlemen,
we would like to recognize the governor of Ogo State, Chief Dapo Adip Abiodu, His Excellency, the governor of Ogo State, and Dr. Adishna's drummer. Okay. Um, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we are going to continue with our program. After this set of photographs, could we take our seats again? Your Excellencies, could you kindly take your seats, please? At this point, I'm going to invite. Mariam Buka Hassan, a Nigerian poet and spoken word artist. Thank you very much, Your Excellencies. Mariam Buka Hassan, are you in the hall? If you are, please quickly come to the podium. Okay. All right, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we will continue with our program. There will be an opportunity for photographs to be taken. Your Excellencies, if you could please take your seats. Thank you very much, Your Excellencies. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, we have before us today a truly talented Nigerian spoken word artist and a poet. As I mentioned earlier, I believe that in our lifetime, she will emerge as Nigeria's Poet Laureate. She's going to make a very brief presentation, less than five minutes, and then we'll hear from Dr. Adishna and from the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Mariam, over to you. Thank you very much for joining us today. The Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the awardee, heads of states, our royal fathers, captains of industries, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is an honor to be standing in front of greatness today and to speak about greatness. And today, greatness wears the face of a man. And the story of that man is one that was conceived in the waters of little beginnings in a village so small it could fit into a heartbeat. A starry-eyed boy walked for miles and miles searching for a wellspring. This was the origin of a thirst no ordinary water could quench. The thirst for the death of poverty, the thirst for hope like raindrops, the thirst for peace like the soft breathing of sleeping children. In this poem, every man has a right to a dream, the boy's father. A modest farmer envisioned a life for his son, far removed from the unrewarding toil of the earth. But the boy had his own dreams in the lines of his palm. That secret language of destiny only the courageous can speak. He embraced the land and its vast possibilities. Like a butterfly bursting out of its cocoon, his coat of colors never failed to dazzle. And like Joseph, the son would bow to him. That way, of him to challenge himself, to take a sad song and make it better, to be like water, we no get enemy, we no get hands to hold grudges, pure and powerful, formless and fluid, vital and unconquerable, a first class man with a first class he graduated, it was plain that when his dreams too would fly, they would fly first class. Before he aced his masters, he was the master of his destiny. 
you see, once. I asked a farmer if there was a special fertilizer to make a country grow. He said without blinking, hope. Oh. The common and eats up the clouds in the sky. So to irrigate the soil, he must toil. But what is something about water, the spirit? And what is famine, if not the crippling hunger for hope? In this poem, hope is what picks up your voice from the dirt and hands it back other times. Hope is the audacious mouth that speaks for you. That is the saying. Sometimes hope is a man. And so like a cynical philosopher, I walked around in the daytime with a lamp searching for that man. But I was told not to bother. That corruption in my country is like the oil that stains one finger, therefore all the rest are soiled. That my country is a jungle and no man has time for hope. That anything that was not a prey was a predator and anything that wasn't eating was it's a quest for survivals. There are no allies, no hope mongers, no angels. But every man is an island surrounded by a sea of tears. But I have seen goodness and I know that one man can begin the revolution to change Africa. I have known kindness like the face of that man, emerging from the Ibadan rainstorm, the gallant siddling that survived the erosion that washes away the soul, grew into a fruit-bearing tree, giving back to the world. Dr. Adeshino Akinwomi, like a true child of God, breathed life into a deteriorating scene and no man who lacked courage can speak to the cloud. Dr. Adeshino Akinwomi, the one who raised his pen and struck a blow in the armor of poverty and look, it bleeds. Answering the call yesterday to serve as the people's minister of agriculture, and today, the president of the African Development Bank. Oh, well, is it not true what they say about the scope of his vast as the seven seas? Is it not true what they say about his integrity? Solid as the rock of ages that cleft only for the weak and vulnerable to find protection. Oh, is it not true what they say about his hands? They carry freedom like gift of gold, and there is a basket of harvest in every field. And under his wings, the four-letter word hope no longer cuts the common man's tongue. It rolls up like thunder and strikes the heart with joy. Oh, I will sing the name Akinwumi. For who does not desire the courage of the man who dares to be different? Who sits in halls of power and chooses to sing for those who have lost their voice? This truth my mouth will not. And when we remember the better angels of our civilization, we will remember you, Dr. Adeshino. In their thousands, farmers marched in your praise. You who carved opportunities for them out of dying and stumbling blocks and knocked down the cankerworm structure of middlemen taking endless bites from their hope. Oh, the labor of our hero's past is finally bearing fruit. Is he not the man that Chief Obafemi Awolowo dreamt of when he spoke about finding the courage to look in the gloom and see radiance? Oh, is he not the man? Chief Obafemi Awolowo, eyes full of stars, dreamt of this sufficient. And when we remember the better angels of our future, we will remember him. Chief Obafemi Awolowo poured his vision into radical policies that knocked down the barrier between the rich and the poor, the small and the mighty, and shattered the opportunity with life. Dr. Akimumi, unlike the cynical philosopher, we looked and we found. You who desires to live a Nigerian, die a Nigerian. May God grant you your sacred wish that on the day of resurrection, you will raise the Nigerian flag high in the heaven. We prayed and you came to us, not just as hope, but as a complete and Africa's optimist in chief. Congratulations. Well, I told you earlier, Mariam Buka Hassan, in my estimation, will be the future poet laureate of Nigeria. Of that, I have absolutely no doubt. Thank you very much for your passion and for your articulation 
this afternoon. God bless you. Thank you so much. Well, the reason why we're here today is obvious to all of us. And our laureate has been described. I'll let Mariam receive all the accolades she needs from the Vice President and Excellencies. Very, very well deserved. If you've never listened to her, please look her up online. She travels all over the world and represents Nigeria well in stunning fashion. And she indeed is a jewel of this country. Please once again give Mariam Buka Hassan a warm round of applause. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, our laureate today has been described by several dignitaries, so there really isn't much else to say. It therefore gives me great pleasure to welcome to the podium 2023 laureate, the President of the African Development Bank and Africa's Optimist in Chief, Dr. Akiwumi Adishina. Please give him a warm welcome as he comes to the podium to deliver his address. Wow, did you miss that? Before he came on stage, his beautiful wife Grace gave him a nice peck on the cheek. cheek. I'm sure that will give him a pep to his step this afternoon. Mr. President, over to you. Thank you very much. Your Excellencies, our Royal Fathers, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I am particularly humbled, Grace and I, that you all are here today. We are filled with emotion, overjoyed and filled with very deep and sincere appreciation for your being here to honor us out of your schedule, extremely busy. But you're gonna to have to permit me because I have to say many thank yous, but let me thank by saying thank you to every single one of you. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. I am deeply humbled and honored. Let me Today, I wish especially recognize Excellence Bola Metinumbu, the President, UCFR President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, ably represented by His Excellency Kashim Shatima, GCO and Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you, Your Excellency, for being here, sir. And I'd like to, through you, convey to His Excellency the President my deepest appreciation for the exceptional reception and the full state honors I was given to the visiting heads of state. I would like to recognize Papa, His Excellency General Yakubu Gawan, the former head of state of Nigeria. When I was a kid, we used to wear a cap and we used to, I wanted to be a soldier actually. But somehow, it didn't work out that way. But with your beautiful wife and Mama Victoria Gawan, she was so beautiful when you married her. She's so beautiful now, and I don't know how you guys do it, but thank you very much for taking good care of Papa, and Papa for taking care of Mama as well. His Excellency President Lukiak Mobasaja, His Excellency President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan, my boss, Excellency former Vice President Amadi Sam. I'm enormously honored and humbled that Excellencies, President, and Heads of State, African countries have traveled to be here specifically for this occasion. I would like to especially appreciate and thank you 
Your Excellency Samia Sulu Hassan, President of the United Republic of Tanzania, and my dear sister and friend, who gladly agreed to be the chairperson for this occasion. Thank you very much, ma'am. I'd like to recognize and immensely thank Son Excellence Azali Asumani, le président de the Union de Comor, et qui est aussi le président en exercice jusqu'à quelques jours au niveau de l'Union africaine. Vous êtes un exceptionnel leader, un exceptionnel frère. Merci pour vous et maman pour être là. I was just saying thank you very much for him for being here. My biggest president of Ethiopia, Our Excellency Sally Wokzuide, thank you for being here, my big sister. And let me thank the President of the Republic of Togo, my dear brother and friend, represented by my sister, the Prime Minister, Our Excellency Victor Dogbe. Merci beaucoup. Former President of Ghana, who was here, I just saw him, John Dramani Mahama, thank you, sir, for making time to be here. What a great honor for Nigeria, and what a great honor for Africa. Thank you all very much. I'm also greatly honored to have here at this event, your excellences in your large numbers, executive governors all across the states of the Federation. Thank you very much for coming. Former governors, distinguished senators, members of the House of Representatives, horrible ministers, ambassadors, including the dean of the ambassadors of Africa, all the way from the United States, Ambassador Mumbuli. Thank you for being here to represent all the ambassadors in the United States. My special thank goes to my brother, His Excellency Babaji Day, Governor of Lagos State for your extraordinary hospitality in welcoming all of us to Lagos, Nigeria's economic capital and center of excellence. I also wish to thank my own governor. My own governor, His Excellency Dr. Abiodun. Thank you for being here. Let me thank your majesties that have been here for all of your prayers and support. Thank you all very much. Let me now turn and thank with deep appreciation and gratitude the Obafemi Awolo Foundation, for selecting me to receive this distinguished award. My special thanks go to Ambassador Dr. Dosumu Awolo, Awolo Dosumu, Executive Director of the Obafemi Awolo Foundation. Thank you very much for all of your great support and recognition. The Chair of the Obafemi Awolo Foundation, former Head of State General Yekubu Gawan, as well as the Chairman of the selecting committee, selection committee, Bafu Aolowo Prize for Leadership, Chief Emeka and Yog, former Secretary General of the Commonwealth, who is here with Mama and Yaku. Thank you very much, sir, for everything. And we always used to watch you when you were Commonwealth Secretary General, and your English was even better than that of the Queen's English. And so we all wanted to speak like you. My immense gratitude goes to all those who nominated me for this award. Dr. Gulok Ebilide Jonathan, my former boss, former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, who nominated me for this award. It, is my greatest, it was my greatest honor to serve Nigeria under him as Minister of Agriculture. My immense appreciation also goes to several global leaders who supported my nomination, including former Secretary General of the United Nations, Ban Ki-moon, Right Honorable Tony Blair, former Prime Minister, of the United Kingdom, Ambassador Kenneth Queen, the former United States Ambassador to Vietnam, and the President Emeritus of the World Food Prize Foundation in America, Professor Soji Adelaja, Distinguished Professor of Land Policy at Michigan State University, and my own dear brother and friend, Professor Patrick Bakwijan, Chief Executive Officer for the Global Center on Adaptation. The confirmation of this award today on March 6, 2020, sides with what will have been Omar Papa Chief Awolowa's 115th birthday, and 37 years since his passing. I guess with that, I can lift my eyes towards heaven and say, Happy birthday, Papa. 
May she of Bafemi will our soul continue to rest in peace, even as we draw inspiration, firing lessons from his life, policies, and philosophy. I have received several global awards by God, for which I am very, very deeply grateful. For receiving the Awolawa Prize for Leadership is particularly very That's because it brings back to me personal memory. Growing up in the old western region of Nigeria, in the 1960s, only one name was synonymous with people-centered development, Awolo. We lived in the same community with, as they say, in Okribola in Ibadan. As a young child, passing by the frontage of his house was my favorite pastor. I remember peering over its low walls, see if I could catch just a glimpse of the man, transform the lives of millions in Western Reef. My father was so enamored with Chief Awolowo, or by Chief Awolowo, he devoured his book, writings, and art. Name Awolowo was the constant guidepost every discussion in our home. So much was my admiration when I was 19 years old, and Chief Awolowo ran for president on that Unity Party of Nigeria in 1979, my friend and a, myself and a close friend of mine, and I think that friend you can understand is Dr. Olado, who has been the moderator of this event. We came all the way from University of If. We wanted to catch a glimpse of him as he addressed people in Lake. When we arrived at Chapabalewa, in square in Lagos, stands and the grounds were packed to capacity. The gates were locked, but we were absolutely undeterred. We had traveled all the way from Ife and will not be denied. So we climbed the tall steel gates of the square, an unbelievable height actually, if you think about it, when I look at it today. Once we scaled through, we ran up close to the stage where he was speaking from and proudly stood just one arm's length from him and his dear wife, Mama Hana Dideolu Awolo. Just a glimpse was enough. We listened with rapt attention to the exposition of his plans for Nigeria. We were mesmerized. Like a fragrance, his words took our breath away. We could smell hope in the air. Hope that Nigeria will be great. Hope that education will be free at all levels. Hope that there will be health for all. Hope that the remarkable transformation witnessed in western region of Nigeria in education, in agriculture, in health and infrastructure, undergirded by a highly professional and disciplined civil service, will soon take hold all across Nigeria. Like the refrains of an orchestra, the sounds of owl, owl fill the air. As our hope were raised, we could see a new Nigeria. Alas, this was not to be. Nigeria means its best opportunity to be great under President Awolo. Chief Emeka Ojuk said of him, the best president that Nigeria never heard. Let me say today very clearly that Chief Awolowo was bigger than Nigeria. He was the pacemaker, the pace setter, the front runner for development in Africa. His intellectual capacity, vision, pragmatic, Social welfareism helped him to accomplish what was seemingly unimaginable. He built four skyscraper in Africa, the Kokoha. He built the first television station in Africa, WNEV. He built the Liberty State, the first of its kind in Africa. 
He implemented a blueprint for development that focused on building human capacity through massive programs to educate, develop skills, and lift people out of poverty, provide massive infrastructure, and develop institutions that turn farmers into wealthy entrepreneurs. I dare say that Chief Aulowo implemented the Sustainable Development Goals decades before that phrase. He was an inspiration for us, far beyond the shores of Nigeria. His philosophy, Awoism, was studied globally and helped shape programs and policies in other countries. And talking of other countries, I just have two people I want to just mention. Uh, Chair Gumede, please, from South Africa. Uh, please, Juju, also from South Africa. Please rise. You will recognize him as being in the parliament in South Africa. Thank you for being here. Today, Your Excellencies, my lecture is titled Making a New Nigeria. Welfare is policy and people-centered development. From my early days, I was influenced by the same drive as Chief Awolo. I promised myself then that if I ever got into any position at all, I will run welfareist and people-centric on. My heartbeat has always been about people. Nothing more and nothing less. My life is only as useful to the extent that it is used of God to do my utmost transform the lives of people. Awo inspired me. Decades ago, the perfume of building hope dropped off on me. It's a fragrance that still lingers on today. So, as I stand here before you today, to receive the Obafemi Awolowo Prize for Leadership, I am humble. I am inspired. I am motivated. I feel a new sense of responsibility. I'm reminded today of the words of Martin Luther King Jr. History has crossed upon me the responsibility from which I cannot turn away. Yes, have a dream of a better and prosperous Nigeria just like every single one of you did. Yes, I have a dream for a globally respected Africa. Yes, I have a dream that Africa will not be condemned to the bottom rungs of the global economic ladder. I refuse to accept poverty's imprint on Africa. I still believe that Nigeria will rise again. And I still believe that Africa will shine and fulfill its destiny globally. I still believe that we shall be who we were meant to be. Today, I accept this pride as a trustee of hope for millions of our people. You bestow upon me this honor, this great honor, at a momentous period of great global challenge. Rising debt, climate change, fragilities, and vulnerabilities. Your honor is a call to do more amidst this challenge. So therefore, I celebrate but with measure. As I know with all humility of the work of making Nigeria great and by implication making Africa great is still in progress. It is my lifelong mission by the special grace of God to do all I can to improve the lives of all Africans. The wind of challenges may sometimes shift us away from our destined path, albeit momentarily, for we shall overcome our challenge. Nigeria must dream. Africa must dream. Yes. We may have challenges, so do other people around the world. Yet, 
All I see tells me that by God's grace, we will get there. We must start by unleashing our potential, our full potential. While managing our challenges, we must make poverty history in Nigeria. And we must make poverty history in Africa. We will not be known as the museum of poverty in the world. We must deliver a better Nigeria and a better Africa for this generation and for generations given the high level of poverty in Africa and in Nigeria and in other countries. What is needed are welfare policies that exponentially expand opportunities, reduce inequality, improve the quality of life of people. These must be anchored on public-centric policy and private sector wealth creation for all. I would like to focus on five areas. First, rural economic transformation and food security. Second, healthcare security role. Third, education role. Fourth, access to affordable housing role. Fifth, government accountability and fiscal decentralization for a true reality. First, Nigeria must completely transform its rural economies to ensure food security. A better Africa must start with the transformation of our rural economies. That is because 70% of our population live right there. Rural poverty today is extremely high. And at the heart of transforming rural economies is agriculture, the main source of their livelihood. When agriculture moves away from being a way of life to a business, everything changes. Higher income, higher wages from agribusiness will support education and health and support even greater job creation for millions of youth. As a young student who attended high school in a village, I remember when I went to the village school, the great school, but it wasn't a village. I went to Igbo Baptist High School, fantastic. And I remember asking my father, why you went to Igbo College? Why did you send me to a village school? Look at me and you say, I don't know what you are going to ever be like. But if you live in a village and you understand the challenges of, if God ever makes you anybody important in life, you will know exactly what to do. I witnessed in that school, in the village, the high correlation of agricultural performance. Several of my classmates, and many of them are here today, and thank you for coming, my class. But children of farmers, I noticed then that when agriculture season was good, they stayed, they performed well. When the season was poor and agriculture did not perform, several of them dropped out of school or attended intermittent. The decision by Chief Obafemi Awolo tied with the transformation of the rural economy was a very, very sound policy. The establishment of farm estate, the expansion of farm rural road, rural farm road, supported professionally by well-run marketing board, helped to stabilize the prices of farm produce. What noting your excellency, that the prudent fiscal management of the cocoa revenues power the economies of the states that then constituted the Western region. These revenues allow the government to embark on an unprecedented idea, an audacious idea, free education and free basic health care service. It was common then to hear pray, Agbeloba, farmers are king uttered with great pride. We must give new life to our rural area. If Chief Aulo could do this in the 1960s, then there is no reason why rural economies today to be immersed in extreme hope. Clearly, rural economies have been abandoned in most places, 
in planning and in terms of policy. Today, they have become zones of economic misery. The popularization of rural economies was causing the implosion of many countries and fragilities of Africa. When rural economies, the fulcrum of African society, falter, nations fall. This leads to the spread of anarchy, banditry, and terrorism. This broker of social disruption takes advantage of economic misery to entrench themselves. Transformation of rural economies must therefore be structural, systemic, strategic, and comprehensive. Doing so means agriculture must be turned into a wealth creating sector. I aggressively pursued this when I served as Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development in Nigeria from 2011 to 2015. Many call this period farm revolution years. Nigeria witnessed an impressive transformation in its agricultural sector. Farmer-centric policy. We delivered improved seeds and fertilizers for 15 million farmers. We delivered millions of cocoa seedlings across southern Nigeria. We delivered a cotton transformation across the north. We provided millions of old farm seedlings, farm estates, including small farmers and large farmer estates across the east, south. And the West, and I remember I was even challenged, why are you giving away all palm seedlings for free? And I said, once you plant the tree, you can't export. We accelerated the delivery of improved rice seed across Nigeria, sparked a rice revolution that transformed several regions across Nigeria. You have the governor. Governor, can you please stand? Please clap for governor. Please kindly sit. I didn't know him until I came to give a talk, a lecture at the Business Day Forum. And I didn't know it was the same person that walked into my office. And your rice was called Damodi rice, I think. My wife, when I was minister, she went to every market, buying every kind of new rice that was coming out as our policies were in operation. They said, honey, this is the new rice. This is the new rice. This is the new rice. Please thank you for thanking my wife, but I can tell you, I cannot be who I am today without her. No possible. And I wish my boss was here. My boss is still here, Vice President Sambo. I used to tell my press, President Goodluck Jonathan that if I, when I came to the Federal Executive Council, it's not possible for me to present a memo that would be rejected. And he said, why? He said, because my memos go through a grace test at home. If it can pass grace's test, sadly it can pass a test anywhere. And that has been the same ever since. Thank you, honey, for that. But anyway, she said, I found a new bag of rice. 5 kg, 10 kg bag of rice. And it's called Damodi rice. I've never heard of it. And I gave import quota for all the rice processors in the country to bring in rice, process the rice, make more money so they can begin to cultivate rice in Nigeria and then process rice in Nigeria. One of the young people that came into my office is now the governor of the state. So I didn't realize rice can make you so rich. Sound policies transform the life of people. I found to remember one of my farm trips in company of the then governor of Kebbi State, His Excellency Usman Dakingari. Amazed by the revolution happening, I recall him saying to me, Minister, thank you for the government policy. We no longer measure our rice cultivation in hectare land. We measure them in kilometers. Rice, rural economies boom, look at wild packet rice, like that of Damodi rice that we talked about just now from the governor, took over the market. And I know that right here in Lagos, governor of Lagos State, 
in Itoki's Itoki was Imota, you set up a 2.5, uh, 2,500 ton capacity. Was it, has it grown? Yes. But that was what was called the, the, the rise from Lagos. Uh, and, and so congratulations also. I think uh, rice can even make successful governance even more successful. Price of rice at the time was 6,000 naira a bag. Helped to stem food price inflation. Fortunately today, same bag of rice just nine years later. Now 77,000 naira a bag. That 12-fold price increase, unfortunately put price, basic staple beyond the reach of millions of people. In several parts of Africa today, prime revolution scale with support of the African Development Bank. Permit me, please. You have heard a lot about me today. What I've done, additional did this, additional did that, additional accomplished that, but I don't walk alone. I have some of the very best that anybody else can ask in the world. And I like all of my staff from the bank that are here. They are the ones that are the power behind the throne who actually make those things happen to stand and be recognized. Thank you very much. You guys are awesome. Thank you very much. Over the last seven years, we have invested over $8.5 billion in agriculture. It has impacted 250 million people. At the core of the Africa-wide strategy to revamp rural economies and turn them into zones of economic prosperity is the development of special agro-industrial processing zones. These zones have been provided with critical supportive infrastructure, including water, roads, processing infrastructure, and logistics. Banks and partners are providing $1.4 billion for these zones, 25 of them across 11 countries. And many of my partners are here today, including the Badia Bank. Thank you for being here. I know the AFC is here. Uh, Africa 50 is here. And so many of the partners, thank you very much for your partnership. Right here in Nigeria, Your Excellency, Mr. Vice, let me thank you for chairing the group, for receiving Professor Banji Oyelara, my special advisor, on industrialization in your off pamphlet hours to make sure that we can implement the $518 million project to do the development of these zones in eight days. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. I want to tell you, Mr. Vice President, that we will not spare any effort. Rally around the President, self, and this government to make sure we can get agriculture back again. And that's why we've decided that we will mobilize an additional $1 billion to make sure that this special agro-industrial processing zone will now be done in 28 states of the Federation of Nigeria. And Mr. Vice President, together myself, with other partners, including AfriX in Bank, Rama, we've just put together a $3 billion facility to do even more. And I want you to know that the times are challenging. But sometimes, Mr. Vice President, leaders like yourself come to this kind of location because you also need to be encouraged. And let me encourage you. I told Mr. President when I had the opportunity of seeing him on the 14th of February, for the same day that the senior brother, my wife, died, I went to see him. And when I spoke with him, Mr. President, I understand you have talent here. Okay. I'm not saying talents are okay. But when there are issues, please don't leave leaders help. Rally around leaders. This is very important. I told him, as I'm speaking to you, we already have in the field. Dr. Fregene, can you stand up? It's my 
Director for Agriculture over there, Vice President Beth on Agriculture over there, and Dr. Tim Williams, Dr. Sanginga, my special envoys on agriculture, they're all here. I had them in, in, the east, I mean, in the north for two weeks as I speak to you, thanks to the support of all of our governors that are here. We have already supported, with $134 million, the cultivation of 118,000 hectares of heat-tolerant wheat. We will, by the grace of God, this month, do 150,000 hectares of maize. And by this wet season that is coming, we will support the cultivation of 300,000 hectares of rice, 300,000 hectares of maize, 150,000 hectares of cassava, and 50,000 hectares of soybean. What that means, Your Excellency, Mr. Vice President, is that we will be able, by the end of March, get at least a million hectares additional of wheat with four million metric tons of additional food coming. But I thought of the issues. My job is to support. My job is to find solutions. Let's all put our hands together. It's a collective responsibility. I have no doubt that we can get out of the situation that we are in. And to ensure that the continent can feed itself and achieve full sovereignty, we organized the Feed Africa Summit that High Excellency President Samir and also uh, the other presidents mentioned. 34 heads of state and government in a in a meeting. And somebody asked me, are African heads of state committed to the policies that you are talking about? I said, yeah, they are. And I remember during the meeting, it was time for lunch. It was 3.30 p.m. President Bill of Syria alone. Will you choose to go for lunch, sir? We will do that. If you're so direct, you say no. I would rather go into those with the other presidents in the investment boardrooms and figure out how we are going to feed our people. And thank you, Your Excellency, President Samir, President Asali, President of Togo, my dear brother Nasimbe, President of Ethiopia, and several other presidents, including President Buhari, who was there at the time. We were able, within 72 hours of that summit, we had mobilized with other partners that are here today, we had mobilized $30 billion in 72 hours. And in six weeks, we had mobilized $72 billion, as President Asali said. So I know that the issue of feeding Africa is one that we must do, and feed Africa we must do with pride, because there is no pride in begging for food. Second, Nigeria needs health support. Smart governments provide universal basic health care coverage for their citizens. Africa loses today $2.6 trillion annually in terms of productivity due to sicknesses and diseases. Just as every nation has a national defense system, protect its citizens against all forms of aggression. The same is true for health care. A nation without a sound health care system is a nation that is defenseless against the invasion of all forms of diseases and pandemics. COVID-19 exposed the weakness of African economies on health systems. While developed economies spend $19 billion on fiscal stimulus programs, approximately 19% of the global GDP. Africa spent only $89 billion. Africa's urgent need for vaccines was pushed to the bottom of the global supply chain. 
At the time when Africa was unable to provide one basic shot of vaccine, developed countries provide a second shot, third booster shot, fourth shot, and fifth booster shot. It was alarming watching an unprotected Africa grapple with this insidious. Some even projected that as many as three million Africans were going to die as a result of this pandemic. Africa, just two testing centers. No medical gloves, no face masks, no medications, no vaccine. The African Development Bank Board agreed with us in management as we presented to them a $10 billion facility, which we put in place rapidly to poor countries to fight that pandemic. What is not acceptable or sustainable? That Africa imports today 70 to 80 percent of its medicines and produces only one percent of its vaccine. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the health security of 1.4 billion people in Africa cannot be subjugated against global supply chains or the generosity of others. What if others are not so generous? And that's why the African Development Bank launched a $3 billion program, revamp Africa's pharmaceutical industries. That's why we established what's called today Africa Pharmaceutical Technology Foundation, support access to proprietary technology from global pharmaceutical companies. That's why the African Development Bank launched another $3 billion to develop quality healthcare infrastructure across the continent. Special emphasis, primary health care system, which in fact, if you fix primary health care systems, probably will fix 85% of all the challenges that you have in the health care sector. We will continue to invest heavily right here in Nigeria, support the revamping of the pharmaceutical industry, and develop better health infrastructure. It is imperative, therefore, that Nigeria secures the health of its population. This will require ensuring that no citizen travels more than a few kilometers to find a health care center. The widespread use of mobile health care centers, e-facilities. Dr. Adewara from London is here, Nigerian is here. He's doing a phenomenal job in that particular area. The digitalization of health care system, Mr. Jitenda of the uh, of Sazdeva is here somewhere and I know they are doing great work in Kaduna. Especially primary health care centers, health insurance for all, including innovative micro health insurance payment systems, as you go systems, will capture bulk of our population that is in the informal sector. Third, Nigeria needs education for all. Nigeria today accounts for 15% the total population of out-of-school children, according to UNICEF, which is over 10.2 million at primary school, 8.1 million at junior secondary. This is not a gold medal Nigeria to be proud of. The problem is both acute and alarming in northern Nigeria. Urgent public policy, coupled with community sensitization, and incentives for schooling are badly needed if this trend is to be reversed. Public incentives such as free and compulsory primary and secondary education to be put in place. Yeah, if you want to apply for that, you can go ahead. Thank you. Along with massive investments in training and better salaries for teachers, building quality and safe classrooms and school feeding programs. Your Excellency, a well-educated citizenry is critical for technological growth and development and for fostering creativity, innovation, entrepreneurship, and global competitiveness. We do have a choice. We don't have a choice. A highly educated Nigeria is it's not an option for us not to have. It is an imperative to have a highly educated Nigeria. With only 1% of our population, however, enrolled in university, we are not educating enough for our people at the university level. 
the poor funding of universities, lack of basic infrastructure, poor incentives for faculty and staff, and incessant strikes due to weight disputes have almost tripled the university system. I'd like to say here that I really commend His Excellency the President because I read and followed his decision to put in place programs for students to be able to have affordable loans for them to go to universities. That is a good starting point, and congratulations to the President. But as a result of all of this quagmire, there's a mass exodus out of Nigerian University. With 129,000 Nigerian students, um, I guess they do Japan, which is the, I guess the, the phraseology for getting out of the country, call it here. To start in the United Kingdom alone in 2015 and 2022, according to the Higher Education Agency of the United Kingdom. The mass exodus of students pales when compared to those of skilled professionals. Doctors to engineers, architects and lawyers, IT specialists, bankers, and medical technicians, Nigeria is witnessing a massive depletion of its human capital. This human capital hemorrhage will slow down economic growth, performance, and overall development and competitiveness of this economy. While one might argue that a growing diaspora is good, as they send back home billions of dollars higher than the oil revenue that we have, this is not the way to develop sustainability. Nations that develop do all they can to keep their best human capital at home and additionally source skills from elsewhere with flexible immigration and labor policy. We must make Nigeria a viable place for people to stay and not a place to run away from. Same applies to other countries. I refuse to believe that the future of Nigeria's and Africa's youth lie in Europe, North America, Asia, or anywhere else. I believe that their future must lie in an Africa growing well, robustly, able to create quality jobs and decent earnings for our young people. There's absolutely no reason in the world how we have a demographic asset that then becomes a global negative externality. Let's take pride in ourselves and let's make our demographic asset our economic asset globally. I firmly believe that their future lies right here in Nigeria. And that's why the African Development Bank launched right here, Mr. Vice President, in Nigeria, a program called IDIS, which you know, and in fact you are chairing, ably chairing, that committee on the IDIS, a $614 million program to support Nigeria's digital and creative enterprise. And here are going to be the result. Please support the government. It will create 6.3 million jobs in this country. And it will add $6.4 billion to Nigeria's economy. To support Nigerian young people in business and African young people in business, all the heads of state and government, I always say to myself, how can we have 477 million people under the age of 35? But well, there are no financial institutions. That means you have missing institutions and market failure problems. And that's why the African Development Bank decided that we will create what's called Youth Entrepreneurship Investment Bank. I go around many countries and I'm told I have a youth empowerment program. Okay. I have a youth empowerment program. That's okay. But really, do I have young people that will come to me and say they've been empowered? So I ask, I say, what's going on? Young people need they need us to trust in their mind, their creativity, their entrepreneurship, ability to grow youth-based wealth. So this Youth Entrepreneurship Investment Bank, as you know, Mr. Vice President, we are going to our board this year for Nigeria, and it will be $400 million. We're doing for Tanzania. I was in Togo. We're doing for Togo. And also, we are doing... Uh, in, in, uh, in Ethiopia, 
I think, with the Ethiopian bank. Let me reach my fourth point, and then I can close. I think we need housing raw. I don't want to bother you with more statistics, but I only want to say one thing, so I don't keep you for too long. As a kid, I grew up in a neighborhood wherein we didn't have water sanitation. And therefore, I remember when my father was able to build us a small house. In fact, it was not even a completed house. He built the first floor and we moved in. It wasn't even painted. But I was so pleased and I was so happy because for once in my growing up, I actually could have a place I could I call my own toilet. A place I could have my own bathroom. My friends were children of very rich people. God gave me excellent parents that taught me great value. And I remember going around those neighborhoods and asking myself the question, why is it that we can't provide affordable housing? I was at a function one day. I was asked, why don't we upgrade all the slums? And I said, there is nothing called a five-star slum. Slum is the slum. Therefore, we must do everything possible through new financial instruments to make sure that every individual can have a decent home that they can call there. And I want to ask, Your Excellency, Mr. Vice President, I know you've started a program on housing. And I know the governor of Lagos State in particular has a lot of work going on housing. Let's do more. Let's make sure we turn all those slums. You don't have gold medal in slums. Let's make good homes for people. No more five-star slums. Let me conclude with my fifth point. Your Excellencies, Nigeria needs government accountability and fiscal decentralization for a true federalism. Democracy is more than the right to cast a vote. It is the right of citizens to hold their governments accountable for improvements in their welfare. Citizens' accountability forums are needed in order to have a say in how their nation resources are being used and how their governments are performing Governments must show concrete and transparent evidence of fiscal responsibility. Excellences, government, without citizen accountability, becomes synonyms for democratic dictatorship. Today, therefore, there's a greater need for e-governance systems to enhance transparency and accountability of government and the service of the people. That is what people-centered governance all about. And that's why they are the African Development Bank with supporting the creation of quality of service delivery in this all across Africa. Development clearly requires a significant amount of money, financing. The primary tool for that is taxation. Rationale for raising taxes in Nigeria is that the nation's tax to GDP ratio is low compared to other African and non African countries. However, taxation in the absence of a social country between the government and citizens is simply fiscal extortion. Participatory tax-based financing system demand participatory government. Take the case of Norway, for instance. Tax to GDP ratio is 39%. It's easy, therefore, to make the comparison and say, Nigeria needs to raise its taxes to GDP ratio from 6.1% of GDP to a similar level like in Norway. Yes, you can make that point economic. But consider this, that in Norway, like other Nordic countries, education is free through university level. And if you finish your course on time, any loans you took to feed yourself, clothe yourself, or maintain yourself are converted into grant. 
We must therefore distinguish between nominal taxes and implicit taxes. Taxes that people pay that are borne by the citizens but are not seen or are not recorded. It should be told Nigeria and several other countries pay one of the highest implicit tax rates in the world. That's because most citizens provide their own electricity via generators, repair roads in their own neighborhoods because they can't, if they can't afford to do that. They provide boreholes for drinking water in their own homes. This is 21st century. This is incredulous as I believe that every household will have pipe born water. Sadly, the abnormal has been normalized. If people pay taxes, governments must deliver citizens the services and be held accountable for their ability to do so or not. Governments should not transfer their responsibility to citizens. When governments or institutions fail to provide basic services, people bear the burden of a heavy implicit tax. To succeed with much needed welfare and people centered policies across Nigeria, as espoused by Papa Awolowo, it is necessary to change the governance and decentralize governance to the states in order to provide greater autonomy. States that have tremendous potential, have po tremendous potential to become even more financially autonomous through greater fiscal prudence. States focus on unlocking the huge resources they have based on their areas of comparative advantage. They will rapidly expand wealth for their people. For to increase wealth, they will be able to access capital markets, secure long-term financing, fast-track their growth and development. States that adopt this strategy have less need for monthly trips to Abuja for grants. Instead, part of their federal revenue allocation can be saved as internal state sovereign wealth funds. And these can be used as guarantees against borrowing from capital markets. In essence, they will be free from needing to exclusively rely on the federal government. To get out of the economic quagmire, there is a compelling need for the restructuring of Nigeria. Restructuring, however, should not be driven by political expedience, but by economic and fiscal viability. Economic and financial viability are the necessary and sufficient conditions for political viability. If there was one attribute that defines Chief Obafemi Awolowo, and there were many, it would be his visionary boldness. He went where others feared or failed to go. In the process, decades later, footprints remain in the sands of time. Likewise, today, in Nigeria, we need men and women with vision who are willing to take bold decisions. Surgeries are tough. They are better done well very first time. The resources found in each state and state groupings should belong, in my view, to them. The constituent entities should pay federal taxes or royalties for those resources. But well, let's be clear, the achievement of economically viable entities and the viability of the national entity requires constitutional change to devolve more economic and fiscal powers, states and the region. The stronger the states or the regions, the stronger the federation units are going to be. In the process, our union will be renewed. Our union will be stronger. Our union will be equitable. Our union will be fully participate. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we must be audacious. Instead of a federal government of Nigeria, we could think of the United States of Nigeria. The old will give way to the new. We will change the relational mindset between the states and Abuja. Fulcrum will be the state, while the center will support them, not lord over them. 
with good governance and better accountability system, and a zero tolerance for corruption, more economically stronger constituent states will emerge. We will unleash massive wealth all across the state, working together. A new Nigeria will arise. To do so, we need all of us, not some of us. From our forgotten rural villages, to our boisterous and dynamic urban areas, from the sparks of desire, eyes of our children, to the lingering hope in the hearts of our youth, from the yearnings of our women and mothers, and our fathers and our men for a better tomorrow, and the desires of the old that our end will be better than our past. From the hard-working street vendors and small businesses, largest business conglomerates, we must create a movement of hope. Hope for a better Nigeria. Not a Muslim Nigeria. Not a Christian Nigeria. Not Eastern Nigeria. Western Nigeria. Northern Nigeria or Southern Nigeria. But one Nigeria, a new Nigeria, created by renewed commitment, turn our amazing diversity into our exceptional strength. A new Nigeria, powered by torrents of hope, trust, equity, fairness, and wealth at every level, in every state, by all and for all. We have the capacity to do this and make it happen. We must rise above mistrust and divisions and make history. Not the history that is written about us, about Northern Nigeria, Southern Nigeria, Eastern Nigeria, or Western Nigeria. No, not the history of divisive political parties, but a new history that we commit to write for ourselves the history of a new Nigeria. We are the history maker. So let us collectively commit to make history for a new Nigeria. Darkness of today will soon fade. It will not be long before our star shines brighter as a nation. As welfare is policy and people-centered policy, as espoused by Papa Wolo, which I believe strongly in, for shared wealth. A nation where a majority prosper, not just a privileged few. A nation that provides real opportunities for the youth. A nation where equality of opportunities for women is a reality, not a dream. A nation where hope is ignited and dreams are realized. A nation known for wealth, not hope. A nation set on a hill whose light will never be hidden. A new Nigeria we all can collectively call home. So help us God. And I thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Adishina. Your Excellencies, you may be seated. Thank you very much. Miyusan Orchestra, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency Dr. Akiomi Adishina. Dr. Adishina, thank you very much for connecting the dots in a most amazing way. Thank you for enriching our experience this afternoon with that profound speech.
Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as the stage is being set, kindly permit me to recognize once again the former governor of Ocean State, His Excellency Rauf Aregbeshola, the former Ogun State Governor, His Excellency Senator Ibikle Amoso, the former Governor of Ogun State, His Excellency Olusha Gwashaba, and the former Governor of Ikiti State, His Excellency Kayode Fayemi, the former Governor of Kogi State, Captain Idris Kuya, the Governor of Niger State, His Excellency Umar Bago, I do want to thank you, sir, for being here. We also have with us, I noticed him a few moments ago, a titan of industry in Nigeria, the chairman of Hairs Holdings, Mr. Tony Elumelu. Ladies and gentlemen, next to your seats, there is a complimentary pack. It is provided by both the foundation as well as the laureate, Dr. Akiyomi Adishina and his wife, is yours to take with you as you depart. We have be left the best till last, and at this point, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies, representing the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, his ex that is His Excellency Ashiwajubola Ametinabu, GCFR, please join me in welcoming His Excellency Senator Kashim Shatima GCUN, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, as he comes to the podium to give his address. Please give His Excellency a warm round of applause. Can kindly sit down, please. Yeah. <clears throat> the tragedy of leadership in Africa is the capacity of your lieutenants to make you feel. And this one issue that leaders make possible. The President of the United Republic of Tanzania, Your Excellency, Madam Samia Suluhu Hassan. Your Excellency, the President of the Union of the Comoros and the outgoing chairperson of the African Union, Azali Asmani and his dear wife, Ms. Bari Azali. Your Excellency, the President of the Federal Democratic Republic, Dr. Saleh Wok Dewdi. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Togo, Mr. Pua Nasingbe, represented by the Prime Minister, Mega Dogbe. Your Excellency, the Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Baba Jide Olushola Sanwolu, and other state governors present here. Your Excellency, the eldest statesman, General Yakubu Kawan, GCFR, whom I head, Federal Republic of Nigeria, and his dear wife, our mother, Mrs. Victoria Kawan. Your Excellency, the former Vice President of Nigeria, architect Mohammed Namadi Sambo GCON. Your Excellency's former state governors and deputy governors present. President of the African Development Bank Group, Dr. Akinwumi Ayodeji, Hawaii, MEC. The Executive Director of Bafemi Aolo Foundation, Ambassador Dr. Oluto Kumbo Aolo Dosomu, former Secretary General of the Commonwealth and Chairman Selection Committee of Bafemi Aolo Prize for Leadership, our elder statesman Chief Imeka Anyo Kutar. Excellencies, Ambassadors, and members of the Diplomatic Corps, our religious leaders present, our foremost traditional leaders, most especially the Oni of Ife, the Emir of Beach, the Obi of Onisha, the Olu of Wari, and the Akaribo of Remo. If I don't, if I fail to mention Remo, 
I know the governor of Ogun will be cross with me. Heads of government agencies and parastatals, captains of industry, especially my former boss, Tony Elumelu, distinguished guests, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. The man in whose memory we gather here today serves as a compass for each of us and a guiding light for several generations of leaders. His principles have withstood the tests of time and geography. He stands as a testament to the resilience of conviction. Chief Obafemi Aolo's life also provides a compelling narrative for every student of leadership, an inspiration that continues to resonate across our community, our nation, and the global stage. Therefore, I am honored to be invited to yet another avenue to reassure ourselves. To comprehend Chief Aolo's teachings, we must confront the obscured reality of leadership. The initial trial of every leader lies in overcoming the conspiracies of mischief makers, captives, and saboteurs. For the great Sarge from Ikeni, his enduring impact persists despite revisionist efforts. Time keeps through biases and lies, and through hidden agendas and propaganda. Time delivers to us the naked truth that defines the top decisions and sacrifices every sincere leader must make to create a difference. But in all we do, we must always find strength in the belief of those who trust the process, those who give us the benefit of the doubt. There is no greater honor than the privilege to lead one's people. And assuming a position of leadership during times of turbulence is the ultimate test of our metal as leaders. It is in these moments of uncertainty that true character and capability come to the forefront. While the immediate judgment may be rendered by the people we either impress or displease, the long-term budget is carved by time, a passage. In his time, Paolo was fought both from within and outside his political party. He faced a hostile opposition and was pushed hard to the extent of finding himself behind bars a victim of his ambition to make time. Even his harshest critics came to realize the futility of undermining him, put out, even in death because of his refusal to compromise his conviction. He fought until his very last days in defense of democracy in Nigeria, and these are the examples that make him a hero of the nation. There is no doubt that time has been Chief Aolo's ally. Time has revealed the enduring impact of his ideas and actions. As we pay homage to his memory today, let us recognize that the same power of time to judge fairly connects with the lives and accomplishments of the honorees of this prize instituted in his immortal memory. Today we are here to celebrate a maverick change maker has not only flown our flag all over the world, but has dazzled the world with the nobility of his thoughts, indispensability of his ideas, and dynamism of his act. Today, we gather to honor a man who has carved his path in one of the most challenging offices to lead, Dr. Akimumi Ayodeji Adishina. Like Chief Aolo, our honoree today has exemplified the values that have shaped the course of history at all the institutions he has headed, all the, office, all the offices he occupied. I am therefore thrilled that the Obafemi Aolo Leadership Prize is set out to honor a prophet in his home today. This is the power of standing for one's convictions and serving humanity fairly. But it is not just time that will pierce through the fleeting shadows of skepticism and propaganda endured in the service of the people. Rather, it is the resolve of the people to stand honesty and justice, even when they do so alone, and even when they are out. Celebrating Dr. Adishina's achievements, we are not merely acknowledging a leader. 
we are recognizing a role model and mentor who paves the way for current and future generations. His journey, his journey from the esteemed institution now named after Chief Aulo attests to the transformative power of looking ahead in preparing to hit the runway of the ability to navigate the complexities of the role of the African Development Bank. This is not only his but also his resilience. Yes, Once again, on behalf of my principal, President Bola, ECFR, and on behalf of the good people of Nigeria, I extend my heartfelt congratulations, dear brother. My this prize is a reminder that we can afford not to celebrate our profit. We must always give them their flowers while they can still smell traditional. A prophet of progress and development with two view of his kind deserves our collective recognition and admiration. As Martin Luther King said, the ultimate measure of a man is not why he stands at times. It's not why he stands in terms of convenience but why he stands at times of changes and we are going through some dear phrases. It's rightly posited by Dr. Akiumi. This is a time as to coalesce and face out. Where there is will, there is always. No matter how long the night is, it must give way to the light down. Tell me, the weather might well be, but it won't rain ever. All are, we have a leader who will afford to yes. He's supremely competent, very knowledgeable, and has a track record of excellence. When he assumed the mantle of leadership in Lagos, Lagos was a no-go area. They were harvesting fifty death every morning along this Lagos. It was a huge aslum under his guidance, under his leadership. Lagos, now the same. Lagos is now rated as the fifth largest economy in Africa and projected to be the third largest economy by the end of the day. Largest, third largest rice mill in the world. It's not in rice growing cabbage, no. Largest rice mill, third largest, is here in Lagos. The largest single train refinery in the world. Money goes by and better lies. Money does not discriminate. It's own by a man from Kano, a live for Dango, but is established. I will urge you, Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Yes, we have. But believe me, this people as a nation, we have grown through poverty. Here we have in our audience one of the greatest Nigerians of all time. He provided leadership at critical juncture in Nigerian history. We survived, and we are going to survive the current. Thank you, and God bless us all. We would like to ask, thank you very much, Your Excellency. We would like to ask Your Excellency as, that as you come down the stairs, that you approach the ceremonial cake that we have right in the middle of the platform. Ladies and gentlemen, kindly give a very hearty round of applause to His Excellency, the Vice President, Senator Kashim Shetima GCON. At this point, we, were, we are going to, we're gradually coming to the very close of our event, and we are asking the visiting African heads of state, the President of Comoros, the Prime Minister of Togo, 
their excellencies, the president of Ethiopia, as well as Mrs. Victoria Gowan, the ever beautiful Mrs. Victoria Gowan. So delight to see you. And if you could stand next to your husband, that would be much appreciated. We are live in Lagos, Nigeria, with uh, a plethora of dignitaries uh, honoring Dr. Uh, Akiwumi Adishino, uh, who, of course, is the president of the African Development Bank, as he has received the Obafemi Awolowo Prize for leadership. Uh, and uh, we've heard from him, and we've also heard from the vice president of Nigeria, Senator Kashim Shetima, who, of course, is representing President Bola Tinubu, which gave his, who gave his remarks uh, honoring Dr. Akiwumi Adishino. And by the way, uh, Arise News does have an exclusive interview with Dr. Akiwumi Adishino, which will be airing tomorrow at 10 a.m. Uh, on our flagship morning show. So be sure to tune in for that interview with Dr. Akiwumi uh, Adishino.